Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. So, just getting set up on my side here, just uh, making sure I've got enough room on my computer with memory, as I'll be recording the stream as well. Okay. Ah, how you doing there, Pino? Good to have you as well. Nice to see you. To see you nice. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead here and share the stream, so just be two moments. Not be long. How is everybody doing today, man? You guys all good? There we go. <laughs> Hello there, Dickagi. I still really like that name. It just rolls off the tongue and I like that. So what have you guys been up to today, man? Come on, let's get some stories going. Ah, uh, thank you very much, Lepino. You know. Now that thing's awesome. I need to actually learn how to use it. Um, I've been looking... Well, to be honest, what I need to do is actually look into, like, which lenses I need, actually. Like, what I wanted to use it for is primarily battle reports and stuff of that nature. I really want to try and get into, like, Flames of War, so that should be rather intriguing. I've spoken with Richard, and what I'd like to do is, like, have... Uh, I mean, ideally, if we could have, like, multiple tables set up, really, like, give some scale to the actual battles, that'd be awesome. I'm glad you're doing that. Well, uh, Dicky Geese, good to have you here, as always. Yeah, but I did find that on eBay, man. That was a good deal. <laughs> that was a good deal. We shall indeed see the Night Witches. I uh, do believe at some point, actually. I don't know... See, this is it. It's like, uh, I'm gonna have to do some reading for this campaign, actually. I'm gonna have to do some good reading. The thing is, it's, <laughs> it's almost like a jarring difference between reading uh, the history of the Pacific War and then obviously doing something that is the uh, war on the Eastern Front. It's like, oh man, I, I feel like I'm at my death again here. Please be the biplane. JC Destroyer, Pope of the Biplane. How you doing there, kangaroos? Hello there, Stephanus Magnus, another great neighbor. Man, I like kangaroos, are cool. You'd, you'd like my email address. My email address is, uh, I'll, I'll give a little bit of it, but uh, it starts with Wombats are cool, so we've got that kinship there. We have that kinship. So just a few minutes until we can get really into the meat of this. I'm going to need a bear telly. Thank you very much, and hello, Van Unknown. Yeah, I can't say I'd want to get punched by a kangaroo. I can't say I'd want to get punched by really any animals, really. Probably not too high up there on the list. But I suppose if you had to choose, maybe a badger? <laughs> Something of that nature. And Lone Bear Pitbean, good to have you back as always. Okay. <laughs> I love tap from a koala. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. I, I think I'd go with that. Though, um, it's not the koala giving the love tap, is it? One minute until we're ready to go here. Hello there, Jackalus. Good to have you as always. You know, I should have done some research and actually uh, found what it was to say hello in Russian. That would have been a good idea. But I didn't, and now I'm only just realizing this with one minute to go. So, uh, uh, that's a, oh, yeah, thank you there, kangaroo. <laughs> hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to War in the East. Now, you might be wondering, did I screw my intro up there? I did indeed, that just screw that intro up. But it's good to have you all here. So, here we are once again with Gadagrus, who's one of the East. Now, what are we going to be doing today? It's going to be something really quite spectacular. This is actually the first time for myself to actually play uh, as the Soviet Union, so it's definitely going to be quite the difference to what we usually do see. 
Now what I'm going to go ahead and do here then, is I'm going to go and take a look at, uh, whoops, the game options over here. Now I really, <laughs> I fiddled with the actual settings here. I'm going to give you access a quite clear advantage. I have given myself the plus one, uh, actually no, we'll take that away, we're going to go with no advantages here actually. I should have do an intro in Russian, yes, I wish we could. I mean, I, I find it hard to pronounce English, so, uh, I don't know, maybe in Russian I might have a go at it. Oh, you want to go with very hard? What's the difference? Okay, so we've got easy, normal, challenging, hard, and impossible. We'll stick with hard. I do have to have a chance. <laughs> but I think removing all advantages here and, uh, yeah, benefits would be a good idea. So, yeah, I'm going to stick with none. Then we go, we are playing here as the Soviet Union, of course. We're playing with the Fog of War. Uh, HQ support is locked for the moment. Yep, you are right there, Jov95. But what we are going to be doing here... Now, we did put out a poll on uh, Facebook, actually. Basically, how do we want to play this in the first few weeks? And what we're going to be doing here, then, is each stream will actually have a poll on Facebook, ideally. And in that poll, you'll be able to choose from either... Offensive or defensive? Now, in the first episode, we do have offensive selected by you guys on Facebook, which is awesome. So, in the first episode, we are going to have to try to launch offensives against the invaders as much as possible. I will be using the actual military district headquarters that are on the front lines for the most part. We'll try and go for something that is somewhat similar to real life. We'll try to maybe do a little bit better. Uh, but ultimately, this is aimed at trying to create a scenario that is very similar to, obviously, the German success initially in June and obviously in the first few months of the war. That's what we're going to be going for. Okay. Hello, Van Lanza and Van Bishop. Good to have you as always. So those are the settings that we'll be playing with here today. And of course, we are going to be doing the grand campaign over here, the 1941-45 to campaign. The reason for this, and the reason why we're not playing a scenario, is at least on these larger campaigns, you do... It feels like there's more of the actual context to the battles that are being fought. And I, I do enjoy that. So here we go. Germany and its Axis, Axis allies embark on a blitzkrieg campaign to destroy the Soviet Union, only to be stopped at the proverbial gates of Moscow. Three and a half more years of bloody combat will follow before the hammer and sickle flies over the Brandenburg Gate. Indeed. The Axis logistics and replacements are sufficient for only a short campaign. Failure to crush the Red Army before the end of summer will lead to a tough winter in 1941. Failure to derail the Soviet war economy in 1942 could lead to an unwinnable war of attrition. If you can survive the initial Axis onslaught, the Red Army should be able to inflict significant damage on the invader in the winter of 1941. In 1942, hard fighting will be needed to defend key objectives, but overwhelming resources of men and material will gradually turn the tide and carry the Red Army all the way to the Reichstag. And it's going to be interesting, we actually have to get to that point. Now the difficulty here is going to be a lack of administration points, and you're definitely going to notice that. And as per usual, when I do try and do something like this, the first time is a bit of a crash. Ignore that. Okay. Just get this set up once again and we'll be good to go. <laughs> See, this is where lesser men would crumble. <laughs> there we go. We'll go ahead and pick the campaign again. Yeah, the Windows error sound is uh, potentially one of the worst things you can ever hear in your life. Okay. So, of course, we are not the first player of this game. But, of course, goes to the Axis. What we'll be doing there, Jov, to try and compensate for that, is we'll be trying to launch these effects, one well, of these offensives. We're trying to simulate, obviously, the fact that the uh, Soviets did attack. You now have advantage. I'll double-check that. It does not bear pin feed.
Okay. So, of course, we can see that the uh, Axis Air Forces are, of course, dealing quite heavy blokes to our own Air Forces. Now, I've seen a number of guides when it does suggest actually having all the Soviet Air Forces put into reserve. We will not be doing that. As I don't want to uh, artificially help ourselves to a degree. I do want to try and create a scenario here, which is very much similar to what happened during the actual invasion. We want to have some actual challenge to this. And that's what we're going to be trying to engineer here. And of course we'll be challenged. We have given the axis quite the boost there. But what we need to do here then is to really help the Germans encircle the Soviet forces on the front lines. Okay. So we can see that we are losing quite a heavy amount of aircraft here. We will attempt to actually save the airfields here. The only issue, of course, is the fact that uh, damaged aircraft, I do believe, will be left behind. But I suppose it's one of these questions of, uh, well, I suppose we'll have to see what has actually remained on these airfields. Because these numbers are not looking good so far. 39 lost there. 14 lost there. Yep, a lot of these aircraft are being destroyed in the ground. We are shooting down some of the invaders' aircraft out, so at least we do have that. Yep, 36 fighters and 10 bombers. Indeed, it is the grand campaign and we are playing as the Soviets. And we will be looking at actually launching counter-offensives here, as voted for. I intend to use the Southern Front Command Northern. Basically all the commands on the front line will be looking exclusively to try and launch counter-offensives. Uh, I will be looking for the actual mechanized cores, well motorized cores, mechanized cores, armored cores. We'll be looking for those sorts of commands there. Those will be uh, the actual principal elements that we do use. I will be rather intrigued to see how far the German forces will make it here on the first turn. Van Division does lose quite a heavy amount of men there. And he's completely shattered. That's impressive. Ideally, they're not able to make it to Riga. Riga, Minsk... I mean, I'm hoping against hope that Blessed Torsk actually does stand in this first turn. That would be quite nice. Okay, let's see. I believe I can turn this on. There we go. We are going to have to try and form some counter-attack here. I would say that we'll have to try... Try to exploit the gaps, try to deal with units... Um, but we may have some advantage. And, uh... <laughs> Yeah, the only issue is I say that as I saw a tank division being shattered there. The Axis are not kidding here on these settings. They definitely do not pull these punches. Ideally enough infantry survives in some sort of uh, combat ready state for us to actually be able to draw them up. Incredible, really, isn't it? I mean, 1941, it, it was pretty much... I mean, was there a better point for the Axis forces to have attacked? Okay, so the city of Hornus has fallen there, or Kaunas. Do you forgive my pronunciations? They are not exactly great. And there is another tank division route there. Oh, dear. 
That is what we're hoping for. We're going to intend to actually help out the AI here, which is basically going to require us to actually go with these counterattacks. I'm glad that we do launch these counterattacks. We might be able to score some successes. We might be able to uh, have our pockets last a little bit longer. We will be primarily relying on reinforcements to come in the next few days. Well, the next few weeks, really. Something that I always find really rather interesting is just how the Axis forces, well, probably the German forces primarily, I'm not aware if there were any uh, infiltration forces from the Romanians or the Hungarians, but how, uh, for example, the German infiltration units were able to slip across the border. And primarily, their targets were like centers of communication, obviously like communication lines, telegraph lines, telephone lines, I suppose you could say, would be the correct uh, description. And how many of these, if practically uh, a good majority of them, were cut? You think uh, in a nation such as the Soviet Union, so paranoid about uh, communication, uh, security, and of course securing the means of communication, that uh, these uh, telegraph poles and etc. These 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 lines of communication, we'll say, were not better defended. The 27th Division there didn't give in easy. That's good to see. It's definitely wanting to see how many units here have been shattered. I'm going to be very interested to see how the City of Brass of Sketchy performs here. We do gain quite the defensive bonus from the actual city. What's interesting about these cities is, like, uh, they do have quite the nice defensive bonus, but that bonus is even larger if the city is actually connected to supply. However, if the city is cut off, that defensive bonus is reduced, actually. So, ideal circumstances is we uh, pick our urban centers as the linchpins of our defensive lines. And really, really try to keep the lines of communication open to them. Ouch. Yep, okay, yeah. Uh, City of Brest of Tosca's fallen. <laughs> Oh, this isn't making me feel good seeing so many divisions here shatter. The counter-attack is going to be so much harder now. I'm going to be uh, very interested to see what <laughs> motorized and arbitrators remain. Oh my. I feel like we might do fairly well here in the south. And so that's probably where we have the best chance of resistance. The terrain is quite nice. I can see the uh, second panzer group over here. I do believe making their way north. Towards Minsk over here. See, I will be looking to try and save a lot of these AA units that are attached to cities as well, actually. I think primarily, uh, primarily what we're going to be doing here then is... Uh, Turning off support for our actual cores and headquarters. I really want to have it all concentrated in Stavka. The reason being that I can have like Stavka basically move around the actual front and give out support units as necessary. At least in that way we can actually have it focused where we need it. Okay, so the Axis, uh, the German forces here in the center, on group center is going for a, uh, I suppose you could call it a relatively shallow encirclement. It's still quite deep into, uh, into Soviet territory over here, however. Yeah, they are drawing close onto Minsk. I believe Minsk should be just outside of their reach here. 
ideally. It would be quite a nice center for us to actually form some sort of counterattack. <sighs> Damn, I actually do need some of these divisions, okay. Uh, I don't think they'll have enough to attack this city directly. See, these airborne brigades are actually worth quite a lot. We do need to save them. They're not worth too much in the actual fight as such, but they are quite good when it comes to like stacking them, using them for construction value. Thankfully, we do have many a river line down here in the south to actually use. It will be intriguing to see how how we lay the land deeds after this turn is over. Hmm. I suppose the best way that we can strike at the invaders here is primarily going to be coming from the air. Now, we'll have to take a look at the actual state of the uh, Red Army's Air Force, well, the uh, Soviet Union's Air Force. I've read about the name of it before, but I cannot remember how you pronounce it, and I'm not going to embarrass myself any further. If somebody knows the name and the pronunciation, then do let me know. I'll give it my best. It does feel very clumsy just saying, like, the Red Air Force. Ah, but it's, I suppose it's a fairly apt description. After all, if you paint something red, it does go faster, right? So we do have a fairly good... The WS. That could work. Good to have you here, as ever. Optimistic knowledge. Good to see you, my friend. See, on the front line here on the actual border, we do tend to have level 2 fortifications. So it's quite nice to see that our forces here are definitely having a better time of it. See, that position bound the rough terrain just, just on the river bug there. That is actually a superb position. Definitely one of the best there. We do have rough terrain down here in the south. We may be able to use it. Now, I don't know if the Axis forces here are going to be able to cut off our forces against the remaining border. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. Perhaps the city of Levon will actually stand. Perhaps not. Quite a few divisions there that could be turned into a pocket rather easily. Just the north, just in this area over here. Yep, and they've been pocketed. That's a shame. I can say that we might be able to launch a counterattack from this sort of area. This sort of death, really. It will be very intriguing to actually see the divisions that do remain to us. Okay, there we go. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, uh, that was... Uh, 
I suppose this is it. I suppose it's always this therapeutic, uh, therapeutic uh, to be on the other side every now and then. What do you guys think then? Uh, what do you think our chances will be here? It's going to be really rather intriguing. It's definitely going to be a challenge to figure out where we can actually attack here. We will have to attack though. The Supreme Leader demands it, of course. Okay, so we'll take a look at the actual losses here. So the Axis suffer 5,198 men lost. <laughs> it's actually incredible. Okay, only 2,700 of those being killed. Impressive. Our numbers are not quite as impressive. They do look rather painful, though. 46,000 men being killed. 221,000 being captured. Oof. Men we can replace here for the most time. It depends, really. I do need guns and, of course, the AFVs. So we do lose 2,137 here. We'll go ahead and take a look at our air losses now. Uh, 2,314. Okay. Okay. We can, we can possibly manage with that. They lose 26 aircraft. Okay. Right. I can imagine they certainly will. But that's good. That is what we were looking for here. Okay, so let's take a look at the forces of the Soviet Union. Now, we do look to be in... Okay, yeah. As I thought, the self here isn't too bad, actually. The Axis have penetrated uh, to bad rob, though. We do have some units that do survive here. It's a shame that the 4th uh, Army Command cannot escape here. Right, of course we do see our positions over here. Encircled Minsk does hold on. But we can see that there is quite... Um, yeah, there's some hefty uh, units over here. 3rd Panzer. The 7th Panzer Division. And in the north, of course. Okay. It's pretty interesting to see how... The AI here is actually used as armored units. I mean, that's quite a large front of advance there, isn't it? I mean, that's, that's quite a broad, broad front there. We do see the 6th and the 1st Panzer units across here. Now, fortunately, we do still have a rail line open here, so that's very good. I could evacuate here if needs be, which it more than likely will be. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the actual numbers then. So we'll take a look at our order of battle and we'll go from there. So of course we do have a great number of actual command headquarters over here. So we have, well, I suppose you could call them uh, theatres. Probably a nice way to describe it. So we have Stavka, our overall command here. The Northern Front, Ural's Military District. The North West Front, Moscow Military District. The Western, Orel, Volga, Southwest and Kharkov Southern Front. North Caucasus and the Transcaucasus Military Districts over here. We are going to be primarily using, let's see, it, it's going to generally de uh, depend on what has survived the onslaught in the first turn. Okay. So about 17,524 of our armored fighting vehicles are still in good condition, so that's not too bad there. I can work with that. It's going to be intriguing to find out where they are, but at least we do have some. The Air Force has taken a beat, but it's still, the numbers are still there. The Axis, I mean, take a look at this. They have 2,245 planes ready at this moment in time. We might be able to uh, launch some potentially decent attacks on their air force. We'll have to look, really. We could try and find a, uh, an airfield that is separated. Or potentially one that is primarily bombers. We'll have to see, really. Uh, of course, we're going to have to run out reconnaissance first and foremost. I'm also going to take a look at the production over here. So we'll have this, uh, yeah, there we go. Production filter is on, okay. I just want to see what we have primarily in service at the moment. So as far as it goes for numbers, let's see. We have our fighters, we have our fighter bombers over here. So we are looking at the I-16s. We do have quite a few model of the I-16 over here. Let's go ahead and take a look at these. Okay. Not too bad, I mean, they do carry 200 kilograms of bombs. That's not bad, I can still work with that. The I-153 is not quite as impressive. 
But they still have a decent bomb load, so I'm not going to discount them here at the moment. <laughs> okay. We do have a tactical bomber variant of the I-153. SU-2s over here. Okay, let's take a look at our MiG-3s. So we have a 50 cal van, we do have a 2 uh, 7.62s. Okay. Do forgive me again, tongue tied. I'm always terrible when I start a stream. It takes me some time to warm up, really. Okay, now, how do we look on uh, tanks here, actually? Now, we do have a T-34 and quite a number of units over here, which is quite nice. The 1941 variant, of course. I'm looking forward to using these guys. We can see that they're being produced primarily over here in Kharkov. Uh, Kharkov is going to have to be a city that I do have to defend here quite uh, vigorously. Stalingrad, of course, as well. Now, as the Soviet Union, we do have the ability... Let's go ahead and find uh, Kharkov. So, I do have the ability here to actually have the industry moved out of here. It is going to be rather fun. However, we're not going to be doing this in the first turn. The reason being I want to try and use the uh, rail capacity and use our administration points here to actually try to uh, inflict some losses against the invaders. The question is going to be where. So what we're going to do then is actually take a look at our... Uh, we'll, we'll take a look at the order of battle first and foremost then. We'll try and get an idea of where our units are. So I'm going to press Control 1 over here. Now, units highlighted in red are the overall high command. Units in the orange are the level below that, yellow is the level below that, and obviously then you have blue, which is below that. If Kharkov is one of the few that can produce those T-34s, can you tell it to focus on only producing them? It is a good question. Now, I can see here that there's 51 T-34, we'll, we'll call them manufacturing plants. Uh, I don't have the ability to increase this number, unfortunately. We can, of course, see that we do have the ability to assign AA regiments, of course. What I will be looking towards doing is actually trying to save some of these AA regiments. They're not bad. They're not half bad. These 76mm AA guns are not bad at all. They'll certainly come in handy. Potentially, we may see something like that in uh, one of the East 2. We'll have to see in the future, won't we? Okay, so I do have the southern front down here in Odessa. We'll take a look at the actual strength of the southern front over here then. So we'll start there. So I do have a knife army over here then. We do have a Black Sea uh, Fleet Air Command, Southern Air Command, Southern Front in general. Okay, we do have some support attached over here. That's good to see. Uh, we do have 147th Division here at the side of the Black Sea Air Command. 3rd Airborne Corps and the 9th Rifle Corps. What I'm going to go ahead and do then is go into the Commander's Report. So I'm going to go into the actual Headquarters over here. And I'm going to sort this out, so we'll take a look at uh, fronts then, shall we? So of course we do have all the fronts here. We're going to sort this by the number of men in them. So you can see here, Southwestern Front, Southern Front... Fairly beefy, as far as it goes. Western Front, Northern Front, not too bad. So we have 390,000 men here, but you can see that Southwestern Front there was 716,000 men. That is actually quite a substantial number here. It's equivalent to the Western and the Northern Front, uh, roughly, in terms of numbers there. Armored fighting vehicle strength is much higher. However, as far as it goes for aircraft, uh, the concentration of aircraft is actually greater on the Northern Front. At least what has survived the initial German attack here. So we're going to have to look and see how we can use these uh, assets here. And really try to see how we be able to shape the battle to come. Of course we can see here that the Southwestern Front is really quite heavily overburdened here. So what we may have to do then is actually have assets assigned to Stavka. To make sure that these army commands, these front commands, and obviously the core commands, uh, can function to the best of their abilities. It's not going to be perfect, but at least it will help us out in the short term. And of course, as we do progress through the weeks and months to come, we will be able to sort things and arrange things. Until, perhaps one day, we might be there, standing before the Brandenburg Gate. But we'll have to get to that point first and foremost. 
Okay. I'm rather intrigued just to see what we have available here. T-35s? <sighs> monstrous tank. Absolutely monstrous. So I have that actually located within the 34th tank vision, which is over here. Very impressive. That is an impressive number of them as well. Quite the behemoth. Okay. Indeed, can never have enough T-34s. So this is it. This is where our strength is primarily located. We have about, what, uh, just over a million men here. Quite a good amount of strength. Hmm. Nope, no, we're... <laughs> we might be going uh, for London Bridge, really. That'd be quite amusing. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the actual commanders. Hmm. Right, here we go. So you can see that the overall commander of the Western Front, uh, the morale there definitely leaves a lot to be desired. Initiative isn't bad. It's on par with the, the vast majority of our commanders here. Administration is pretty decent. Mechanized is on par for the most part. Infantry command is actually pretty good. The only issue here is the lack of morale. That is going to be very important here. So we'll take a look at how Vin Pavlov replaced here. Now we do have Zukov available from the start. You can definitely see the difference he makes here. Tibishenko. Some very impressive actual commanders here. Though, in fact, what I'll be doing here then, considering that the, uh, I suppose we could call it the central area. We, I suppose this is it. I'd say the best chance of the counterattack is obviously going to be from south here. This is where we have the greatest uh, amount of strength. We might be able to cause some issues here for the invading forces. Now, as we can see here, this area is pretty solid with divisions. Uh, across the front. We do see some weak points, obviously we do have security divisions, uh, but as we can see that there uh, is a panzer division over here that is somewhat isolated. Now, unfortunately it is inside the city of Rodno, so I'm not going to have an easy time if I was to try and uh, attack it directly. Perhaps if we do have enough strength I might be able to force it to retreat, that would be quite nice. <laughs> can I agree with these? Uh, Operation Unthinkable. It would always be rather fun, wouldn't it? You can't say that would not be fun. I'd love to see either a World War One game or I'd love to see a Cold War game. That would be exceptional. Okay. So we'll go ahead from here then and we'll try to organize what we have. Now some of these units are not actually available for movement here. So we do have to bear that one in mind. It would be very intriguing. Okay. So we do have units such as the 37th Tank Division that are in good shape. But first of all, we're going to run our reconnaissance here then. Right, we do have a great number of our airfields. Let's go ahead and see what we do have available. And uh, do bear in mind, this is my first time playing the Soviet Union, so I'm still I'm still getting used to some of the aspects here. Obviously, it does differ quite greatly to uh, playing as the Axis. Okay, so we do have a number of airfields. I think uh, the first order of business then is we'll take a look at actually organize our airfields. At least if we have them organized together, I can actually make use of them. I do have some elements over here, but I actually do have aircraft within them, so that's good to see. Yep, so the aircraft, the actual airfields are free to move about, which is very handy. Okay. The actual headquarters here is not able to be moved. You are assigned to the Black Sea uh, Fleet Air Command. Okay. We'll try and figure out what sort of distance we can achieve here. Okay. We'll stack these on the actual rail lines over here then. There we go. 
I'm going to be trying desperately to hold on to Odessa. Now let's take a look. What sort of fortifications do I have? Okay, so we do have level 4 fortifications. That is actually rather nice. I can work with that. It may be worthwhile to actually take these AA battalions and regiments out of the actual city. We'll see what we have the um, administration points for. Okay. So I do have some pre... Uh, pre-prepared defensive positions over here, which is actually really quite beneficial. Uh, very happy about this, actually. It does give us something to sort of, uh, to fall back onto. I wonder if this, was, uh, if this was actually perhaps the Stalin line. I think this might be the Stalin line. I can't quite remember the actual uh, correct name. I'm sure it was the Stalin line. Uh, the series of fortifications that were previously prepared. And then uh, the line of fortification was obviously to be moved front to the new border. I'm sure somebody who will be quite knowledgeable will be able to correct me on that one. Okay, so the city of Riga does have some defenses over here, level 2 fortifications. Okay, right. Let's go ahead and sort out these airfields. So let's go ahead and take a look at our hotkeys then. So I'm going to be looking for control 2, there we go. Yeah, fantastic. Makes it a much easier process to actually figure out where these actual commands are. Right. You are actually able to move, so the North Caucasus Air Command can actually move, which is very good. Now, what are we looking at in terms of air power over here? Okay, we actually do have some good aircraft over here. So these are SP-2s, okay? So these are legitimate level bombers, then. Okay, now we're started to talk here. Uh, so 600 kilograms of bombs, not too bad, not too bad. Now, what we could do, then, is actually have them um, placed within the uh, Korean Peninsula. But I'm going to be looking towards bringing them to the front as much as possible here, actually, to support any potential uh, counterattacks. Okay. So I'm going to look towards moving you to the limit. Place your bad Just outside the range of your command here, that's a shame. Now, it looks as if you are unassigned here at the moment. Actually, no, I take that back. Where is your command? Oh, your command's over here, then. Okay. Actually, quite a uh, great deal of aircraft over here. So we have IL-4s over here as well. Uh, yeah, very nice aircraft, actually. What we're going to have to do, then, is try to figure out where we could actually attack the uh, Axis air power. It could be that we attack, obviously, the Romanians, uh, but what we need to figure out, I mean, the best case scenario would be to try and figure out where the Axis transport squadrons are, such as the Junker 52s, the Junker 53s, well, slash 53s. If I could try to damage those band boys, that'd be quite good. But we'll move our airfields then. Uh, we need to actually have them somewhat close to the front and somewhat in a position able to attack. Now, of course, these airfields on the front lines have taken a beat in having they? So we'll go ahead and take a look at their state and really what sort of uh, position they're actually in here. Are they able to be moved? Is it worthwhile? Okay. I suppose the ones that would have been damaged were the ones that were destroyed, so not too bad. We do have some here that are damaged. Overall, not so bad. We'll be able to pull this actual airfield back then, which is good. Let's see. We could have it pulled back to Tarnopol, but I'm going to say about this position over here, just over the city, would be worthwhile. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now, we do have this rough terrain here, which is exceptional. It's going to give me a lot of survivability there. We need to make sure everything is placed on rail lines, so it's easily able to be moved out at a moment's notice. Or moved elsewhere at a moment's notice, so that's always a good one to have. Okay, so the Southwestern Air Command over here. Right. Well, what I'll do then is I'll actually have them brought over here by Kiev. Though, uh, let's see. How... I'm going to say that the Panzers are going to be able to push up to around about this area next turn, depending. It really... I think we might be able to blunt the uh, offensive power of the Panzers here to a small degree. Very small degree. 
we still have forces over here that are well within supply. I mean, the good news here, as uh, we are playing, of course, the Soviet Union, we do have the great benefit of interior lines. So, for example, just take a look at all the rail lines over here that we do have. That's exceptional. That means that we have the space. And I think this is one of the things that is really, um, <laughs> it actually is really quite the make or break sometimes when it actually comes into warfare. Uh, if you actually have the space, that gives you so very much. If you run out of space and you're being defeated, then yes, you really are. There's not much you can do. Um, even if you are being defeated, but you still have space, that gives you a lot. That is very, very important there. So we'll be taking a look at actually trying to uh, anchor our defenses around the city of Zaitemir over here. Uh, Tarnopol as well. I don't think I'd be able to regain the city of uh, Lvov over here, but we will be looking at trying to formulate a uh, effective counterattack. Try and figure out what we can do here. We might be able to punch against these infantry divisions over here. The best case is to really look for divisions that are somewhat weakened. Uh, try and take advantage of that and try to primarily get into the actual uh, support and logistics over here. I mean, this unit over here would be uh, very good to take out. Uh, however, the density of the units over here is quite great. Uh, we are playing here on... Let's see, I'll bring up the actual preferences. Whoops, I always bring up the wrong one, don't I? And we're playing on hard difficulty here. Uh, there's no Soviet bonus. I think we had some lucky rolls, actually. So that was, I suppose, quite nice. Makes a nice little difference for us. Okay, so we'll have these air uh, fields brought back to Zytomir. I want them to be within range of natural headquarters over here. Right, there we go. That's what I want to see here. <laughs> oh, thank you very much, Mr. Jess. I tend to get tongue-tied a lot. And it, it's rather embarrassing sometimes. It's like I'll, I'll end up being like really conscious of it. And I'm like, oh god, I need to stop like getting tongue-tied. But hey, when I get into things, then I do like uh, relax a lot more. Same for anybody really, isn't it? Okay. SBD. Sorry, SB... Two reconnaissance over here. I was almost going to say SPD Dauntless. My god, I've been playing too much Wonder Pacific. Right, the Yak 2 strategic reconnaissance. We do actually have quite a versatile air force, which is quite nice. It's not all biplanes, but we do have a uh, great number of biplanes, but they're still useful. We have Yak 1s, very, very nice. Okay, so I'm going to start off by organizing the actual airfields. I think that's a good way to start, but at least we are not going to lose uh, valuable units on the front lines. It would be nice if the US would lend you a few hundred Dauntlesses indeed, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it would definitely be. Uh, can you imagine if we just had the ability to uh, throw a couple thousand pound bombs out there? That'd be exceptional. Okay. So I'm going to say that we could maybe... Now, on the remaining border, we do have significantly more time here, so that's not too bad. We'll try to keep our assets within their sort of command district as well. So, of course, this is Southwestern Command. This is obviously Southern Command. Uh, so we'll try to keep them together, really. You can definitely see that the command here has been... Yeah, the Western Front Command has pretty much been obliterated here in the center. We do have a great deal of our forces over here that have been uh, cut off. So these are, let's see, 10th Army over here. Are they all assigned to 10th Army? We have 3rd Army Command over here as well. So we'll go ahead and take a look at our actual uh, headquarters then, shall we? So we'll go into the Commander's Report. I'm going to go to uh, Headquarters. I'm going to go to Armies. Uh, speaking of which, how is lend -Lease and the Arctic Convoys represented? I, I see, uh, I believe in 1941, I believe the Soviets received about 300 armoured vehicles, armoured fire vehicles a month. Uh, I think that is just for armored fire vehicles. I believe there's other benefits, but of course, I'm really not too knowledgeable about, about the Soviet Union in this game, actually. It's going to be something of a learning experience, actually. Uh, I think then in 1942, it's 643, 944, etc., etc. I'd have to double-check that. But we'll be able to find that one out as we do go ahead and learn. Okay, so Western Front then. So 10th Army, okay. So I'm going to assume that this little asterisk over here does indicate that these armies are cut off. Okay. 
yeah, they're not looking too hot now. So 47,000 men, 23,000 men, 116,000 men. Over 2,000 armored fighting vehicles as well, so nothing too nice there. We don't see really much else that has been uh, entirely encircled. This is obviously the worst place. Uh, it's a shame that the city of Resortost didn't actually hold out longer. I do have the ability to cause some uh, resistance, well, to fight a resistance with the 75th. Not much. Now I have a 204th mechanized, sorry, motorized over here. The issue is, I was hoping that we might be able to move across here. We'll have to see, actually. We'll have to see. You will see lend these supplies and the logistics report each turn. That is indeed right. We'll go ahead and check out this. Okay, so all these units are now isolated. This unit was disbanded. We can see these units being upgraded. Uh, arrived to the National Reserve. Very nice. Okay. Uh, 50,000 vehicles were added to the pool for mobilization. Very nice. Indeed, not one step back. <laughs> uh, indeed, uh, quote unquote, armored fighting vehicles. So, you know, it'd be rather intriguing as well as to see a Gary Grisby's war in Spain. That'd be rather intriguing, like national, uh, well, obviously it'd be a uh, civil war between the nationalists and the republicans. That'd be rather intriguing to see. Hmm. I think we should be about safe at this point over here with our airfields. I do want them to be fairly close to the front so they can actually offer a decent amount of support, but I obviously do want to have them on the rail lines. And so we're able, at a moment's notice, to evacuate. Indeed, war in Spain. That'd be, uh, it'd be, it'd be pretty cool. Okay, so I'm unfortunately unable to move my headquarters here. So move our airfields. There we go. <laughs> there we go. How are you doing there, Freya? It's good to have you. Right, we do have a decent amount of aircraft here. I'm glad you belong down here. At least by being able to concentrate that air power. Ideally, what I'll be able to bring uh, together with this air power and concentration is if I can focus on selected. Uh, Access airfields. That would be quite nice. Okay. These divisions are actually in quite good shape. So we do have a fifth mechanized core over here then. That's not too bad. Okay. So what I'm going to do then, as I did mention earlier. So I'm going to go into here then. So I'm going to choose all... I'm going to go to our support level. I'm going to choose zero. The reason for that is I don't want anything in these actual cores unless I explicitly place it there. So I want everything to go to Stavka. That's where it needs to go. So what we'll do then is we'll place this at the highest level. I just want everything to head to Stavka. And if it's done automatically, that does make it far easier on my... Uh, <laughs> makes it far easier for me. Indeed, building up a rear area. Now, initially, we are going to be launching counterattacks here. This is to help out the AI and to help simulate the actual opening days of the Second World War here on the Eastern Front. <laughs> Indeed, nothing for the people, everything from Moscow. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay. So that's, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's organized for the time being then. We do have some airfields all the way back here, then. Air power. So Kharkov, okay. I-153s. Right, Kharkov Air Command is able to move. So we'll have the Kharkov Air Command move over here, then. Uh, by Kiev.
I'm going to have to use these air commands almost like a moving circus, really. Just a menagerie of aircraft that we can try to use to support our forces on the front line. Okay. Whoops. There we go. What is your actual command here? Long range air command. Quite long range indeed. Right, so the air power in the south here is actually organized. We do have a number of airfields over here to the center, by Kursk, of course, and we'll have you moved over here to Bryansk. Western Air Command. That is impressively far behind the front lines. Uh, however, it is unable to be moved. Okay, so we do actually have a few units to play with here. So that's not too bad. So what I'll be doing then is actually moving these um, airfields by Mugler. The reason being, I should be able to try and uh, hold that river there. <laughs> Indeed. How are you guys doing then? It's good to have you all here as per usual. You'll have to forgive any mistakes I do make. I've really got to try and figure out how these Soviets play. Hey, gentlemen, that's good to know, my dude. Okay. Have these assets placed? Uh, now, we could have them by Chernigov, but I don't think they'll be required. I'm going to say around about by Vitebsk. Uh, what we've got to bear in mind is, of course, the Panzer units are here. We might be able to slow them down to a degree, but of course we have to be quite ready. So I'm going to have these assets deployed. I mean, what I need to look for here, but is natural, uh, natural obstacles. So I'll say here on the rear of the city of Smolensk. The old Rail Military District here helping out our forces in the Western District. Okay, not too much more to organize now. Those airfields are unable to be moved. This one can move though, which is very good news. Uh, Kharkov Air Command then. So quite some distance away from your own, so we'll have you shifted down this way. Okay, the Western Air Command is actually quite a large one here. Of course, this has been one that's taken quite a brunt of the fighting. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. Okay, so we're not seeing units of damage as such, so that's good news. What I'm going to do then is, uh, while we are going to be conducting offensives here, well, counter offensives as much as possible, I'll keep the air power near the front lines. Okay, Western Air Command, Northwest Air Command. Right, there we go. So we'll have it concentrated around here by Minsk. Try to organize what we have available to us, and then we'll get it shipped out to the rear. Do not want it caught when it's pants down. So what I'll be doing here then is probably trying to use my air power to actually hit these panzer units. If I can try and cause damage to the Panzer units, that'd be quite nice. Okay, I do have another airfield over here. Have you shifted up out of the way? Okay, not too bad now. Where's your initial command? Northwest Air Command, all the way over here then. Okay. So you can see that these airfields are quite spread out, which does make sense. Obviously, we are covering the front here, of course, but I'm looking towards actually concentrating my air assets. Okay. Now, there's not too much I can do about this area here. I don't really have that many units in play. 
I could try to open up this line of supply once again. It does depend really if there's indeed any units here. It's it's going to be a rough flight. Let's take a look at the situation on the ground here. What do I actually have available? Uh, we do have some units here that are unready. We don't really have anything that is in uh, fit fighting shape. So it is going to be indeed falling back to the port over here, our only means of survival in uh, this pocket. Okay. I do have some forces on uh, these islands over here, but they're not going to be in any sufficient strength. And this is a difficult area. The north is very difficult. I'm not going to be able to do too much here. I do have some units I can attempt to save. But yeah, as far as it goes for Lithuania, it's pretty much game over there. Latvia, I'm... it's going to be heavy fighting uh, towards Piskov. That is really where we need to fall back to and with these uh, units. So we'll fall back to Piskov. Okay, Northwest Air Commander. Have you shifted back? Okay. Where do you guys think the offensive should be then? I think the South is going to be the most logical point for us to actually launch any sort of counter-offensive. I think anywhere else we don't really have a shot. It is going to be trying to consolidate and uh, survive for the most part in these other fronts. Hmm. Okay, we'll be looking to send you by Piskov. Have you sent over here to the north? Okay, we'll have you shifted down here. Okay, so I do have another command here available. So you are assigned to Long Range Air Command. You're assigned to this core over here. Okay. We'll have you shifted down here. You're directly attached to Long Range Air Command. So what else do you have? Okay, so you're under the Long Range Air Command. Um, but I'm going to have you shifted down here, actually. We can have you assigned to that Air Command down there. Now, you do have 70 PE-2s under your command, actually. Quite nice aircraft. A uh, decent bomb load there. Actually, pretty nice. Okay, so that would be the airfields organized here for the most part. We do have a couple of us over here, so this is the Baltic Fleet Air Command, okay. So again, these guys are going to be moving out here by Piskov. The Finnish forces are not active until uh, after turn 4, I believe, so we do have some room there. It's going to be really fun trying to figure out how we are going to defend our lines here. It's going to be very, very fun. Right, move these commands down here. Okay, so I actually do have some core level... That's nice. Right, Northern Air Command. Shift you up over here. There we go. Where is your... Right, there we go. So, by Novgorod. <laughs> yeah, you are right there. Whoops. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is actually move these forces out from Novgorod, and we'll have them shifted over here to uh, just outside of Peskov as well. Okay, indeed, Ura. Looking good. Right, then let's go ahead and actually take a look at the actual state of our uh, forces on the ground then. So what I'm going to be doing here then is I'm going to be going into uh, units. You can really get a lot of information here from a commander's report. So I'm going to go into here then. And what I'm going to do then is uh, put the filter on. Let's just take a look at the actual state of our armoured forces over here then. Okay. Ooh, okay. So as you can see, uh, we're looking at the actual table of equipment here. The 36 tank command, well, tank division is down to 18%. Yep, as you can see here, these guys are unready. We have some units on reserve, unready. Plenty of units on unready here. 
19. Armored fire vehicles, 19. Right, as far as it goes, we're ready. So first, mechanized. A number of his mechanized uh, commands here are actually not too bad. We do have some usable units, but I'm going to save that primarily. These are going to be located in the south and the southwestern front commands. Well, district commands. Okay. So we have 13,000 armored fighter vehicles there. <laughs> I mean, that'd be quite nice. Ideally, we might be able to prevent the Romanians being active. Right, we'll take a look at our mechanized. Obviously, we don't have that. We'll take a look at our motorized. Uh, motorized, let's take a look. So, 26% van, yeah. Okay. A few more are ready here for service, which is good. Now, it's going to be interesting to see how the infantry are coping here. So, that is 1.3 million men there. 18,000 guns. Very nice. So, 16%. Yeah, it's a very interesting story, to be honest. So, we're looking at a picture here, there, of where the vast majority of our capable and ready armed forces, they're concentrated down in the south and the southwest. So we're going to have to use that. Okay. Now, these forces aren't yet active, which is very good news. Let's see what we have available to us, then. So I do have a second mechanized core over here, then. Now, unfortunately, your command cannot move. But I can move the 11th and the 16th and the 15th divisions over here. That's nice. At least I do have that capability. This is where having the rail lines, uh, the rail capacity is going to come in handy, really. Hmm... I don't have uh, much in the way of mobility. I could, of course, have them move via rail network. Okay, let's take a look at the actual state of the forces on ground, and we'll figure out what we can actually use here. So I have 18th command, uh, well, 18th army, unable to be moved. 240th, right here we have the 16th mechanized core over here, then. It's actually not in too terrible of a state. I don't think it actually uh, suffered much. That's not too bad, then. Okay. We'll have to take a look at actually trying to save these headquarters as well. So we'll try... Uh, we'll launch a counter-offensive, but we are going to have to figure out where to launch one. So what we're going to do here, then... Is I'm going to run my reconnaissance. And of course, since I've moved my airfields back to a degree, uh, reconnaissance is going to be um, <laughs> a rather patchy thing. So run that for now. Right, there we go. I do have an airfield here on the front lines. So Southwest Air Command, okay, so you belong down here. Quite a lot of air power concentrated here. Right. So we have the uh, 8th mechanized, the 37th rifle corps. Okay. I think the best chance I've got is trying to actually uh, isolate this panzer division over here. There's 1, 2, and 3 panzer divisions, 4 panzer divisions over here. We may... Let's see, I have a 19th tank division here. They do have a small amount of movement available to them, nothing too terribly great. And these ones have suffered quite heavily. Okay. Yeah, the 15th Rifle Corps over here as well, we do have two rifle divisions. Uh, the 41st, oh god, look at the 41st there. 423 armored fine vehicles, that is a lot of armored vehicles. And granted, 266 of them are uh, T6, uh, T26s, uh, 300 of them actually. I mean, they might be light tanks, but at the end of the day, there's still 300 of them. 
Uh, they should have T-34s, but they don't have any at the moment. They do have a great deal of KV-2s actually assigned to them. It would be delicious to actually have those available for service elsewhere, but I don't think we'll be able to save them as of yet, because we do have the flamethrower tanks here as well, as a large amount of T-26 variants. Airhead supply, okay. So they're isolated at the moment. I could try to drip feed in supply here, but of course the question is going to be to what odds do we do that? Uh, let's see. If I had one more hex, I'd be able to try and link up to this actual pocket here. What we need to do then is actually try and think about how we can launch a counteroffensive here. And try to cause some issues for the actual invader. But also be in a position here to where we could potentially open these pockets up when they do form. Okay. So let's see here. I do have the 5th mechanized, we have the 16th army here. I'm going to give the 16th army a colour, so let's just say... I'm really... I don't know what the colours are going to be like here, so let's say... Ooh, that's really bad, actually. <laughs> that's bad. Okay, how about 100, 100? Then what, 20? Okay, that's... Not a nice colour, but it's slightly better. 57th tank division, I'm unable to move you at the moment, which is a shame. You do have a single solitary KV-1 and you have a single solitary T-34 as well. Hmm. Nineteenth mechanized. See, the issue here is that our units are pretty spread out, actually. Okay. Try to have you made ready. As you can see here, as far as it goes for fuel, we really do not have much in the way of fuel. The Raoul is not very good. Uh, Spirit's not very good. Supplies, yeah, we're good on supplies, okay. So I'm going to stick on the supplies map mode here. Well, the actual uh, unit chevron mode, whatever you want to call it. At least that makes me feel a little bit better. We do have some capability to fight back. I think we might be able to achieve the isolation of the Panzer Division here, the 13th Panzer Division of Robno. That might be the best I can actually achieve here. Though even that might be a little bit too much, but we'll see what we can do. We do have some nice positions here to actually uh, launch ourselves from. I do have a decent amount of infantry actually available. So what I'm going to be doing here then is we're going to be going ahead and uh, doing, I suppose you could call it uh, reconnaissance in force. We'll go ahead and move the, um, let's see, what do I have here? I have 146 available to me. Okay, we're going to move up to the mighty 146. Let's see what we are being faced by. Now, place them here. The cavalry aren't quite able to exploit. So let's see. I do have the 195th division over here to the north. We do have a couple divisions that are available. Uh, we do have the unready tank divisions of the 35th and the 20th. I'm going to attempt to actually save them. Um, I'm going to attempt to actually save the elements of the 22nd mechanized. Which is far easier said than done. Far, far easier said than done. Right, 5th army over here. Okay. Take up an offensive posture against the actual invader. We'll have you railed out to this position over here.
Okay. Right, that's the best I can do with those units. No. That has made it a little bit easier on the front here. I do have a better idea of what we have going for us. Vanspire. This element of the 19th. Where, where even is the 19th? Okay, the 19th is down here. Let's see. Have them move along the rail lines here. So we have the 5th army. We'll have the 5th army just move back to the rear. I do have the 135th rifle division here. Okay, your core command's over here. Okay, so we do have some ability to counterattack. Small, but stun. Hmm. I'll be looking to launch attacks in this area here. At least there we might have a chance to actually push the uh, invaders back. Not terribly large, but at least we do have something. So I'm going to try and concentrate my forces here for an attack on the division. So we are up against the uh, 111th division here. I may be able to bring infantry to support the attack. But that is actually a fairly large amount of force there. Right, we are interdicted here by a number of uh, Luftwaffe elements. You know, I've not played Flashpoint campaigns for a long time, actually. Okay, so we're only able to go ahead and pull off a hasty attack. Hmm. Say, yeah, they do occupy the town there. Right, we do have a cavalry over this way. So we'll begin with the actual infantry launch and then attack here against the 111th. So let's see if our counterattacks against the invader can be uh, successful. <laughs> oh, this is going to be painful. We have to try and drive the invader back. Right. Elements of the 7th motorized. Sorry, the 8th mechanized. Very heavy losses. Incredible to see that we do have a thousand armored, uh, armored fighting vehicles there. Incredible numbers. And that is our combat power there spent. Now... I do have a fifth mechanized. The unfortunate thing is I can't quite move them where I'd like them to actually be. We'll ready ourselves though. A vigorous counteroffensive has to be launched under the orders of the Stalin.
You're currently in reserve and unable to be moved to this moment in time. I do have an element verb of a 19th mechanized. We'll have you placed in this position over here. Okay, 24th. Yeah, the 24th mechanized is looking significantly healthier. We're going to try and concentrate our uh, offensive power then against the panzers and the infantry in this area here. So, so this is against the forces of Army Group South. We'll try to place ourselves in a good position to attack. Okay. We are needing what we need here. If I can gain this last hex, I would be very happy. Okay, we'll have the 6th army fall back. Okay. Launch a counterattack to retake the city. Out <laughs> oh, these numbers. Have these units that are routed head for the rear. First, unable to achieve anything there. But we were unable to achieve anything with the 72nd Mounted Division either. But of course, these small counter offenses are needed if we are to not end up in a uh, summer camp, aren't they? I'm looking to see what sort of power I can actually throw against the invaders here. Okay, move up more armored elements over here to the north. Let's see, I do have a 16th mechanized. 16th mechanized is going to be a decent unit here. Trying to bring up these reserves. The NKVD are going to maintain their positions um, along this river line. However, I'm going to have them shipped up to the north here. Can't allow any infiltration units to make it any deeper. Okay, 18th Army is unable to be moved here. 6th Army has been vigorously uh, counterattacking against the invader. Twelfth Army is going to be moving to the city over here as well. Right, this is an important area to hold here. What I'm going to do then is actually move the uh, 164th over here as well. Okay. These forces are to be moved over here. Unfortunately, we're not able to be moving uh, any quicker than this. Or rather, fortunately, I suppose, for some of these units. Have our men moved towards the front lines. Okay, so I do have the airborne brigades over here. These units are superb. 
I'll have them actually take up residence within the city of Zaitemir. Okay, elements of the 16th army can move into the front lines. When able, we're going to try and take advantage of the actual rail lines. Okay, what damage can I cause um, over here then? Hmm. Okay, so we have the 14th mechanized over here. What units do we have on the front line, then? Okay. Now, as far as it goes for the situation in the south, it is a dire situation, as we've added down. I do have forces able to be moved, which is very good. So we are going to have these forces make their way towards the front lines. Uh, we'll attempt to actually be finding areas to actually dig in as well. So we'll have these men moved. As required, we must counterattack. Okay, these men are not yet ready. Uh, these men are going to be sent over here to Kiev, actually. Uh, but then again, um, hmm. We'll begin the fortification of Kiev, actually. Ideally, if the city can hold out a little while, that would be quite nice. You can see here that the divisions there only have 8 construction value. Uh, the air bomb brigades actually do have a decent amount there. One of them at 6, one of them at 4, one of them at 2. Uh, not too bad, really. Not too bad. Okay, so I'd say that's about the most I can do here. I do have some reserve units of rifle divisions ready. Not terribly much. Tarkov command can remain in position. Okay, so I do have some airborne elements over here. These forces are going to make their way uh, to Kiev. They're going to be essential to help us actually dig in here. <laughs> and good to see you there, Cold Steel. How goes the war? Indeed. So what we're doing here then is, uh, this is indeed my first time playing as this Soviet myself as well. So what we're trying to do here then is actually try and simulate as much, uh, as close as possible to the actual scenario, uh, well, the actual real life scenario that uh, the Soviet Union found themselves in, is uh, we have suffered greatly in the first turn of the Axis onslaught. But what we are doing here then is we are required to launch counterattacks where we are able to with sufficient strength. The reason is to actually give the AI uh, the ability to encircle us, but also, of course, we do have to try and simulate the fact that uh, the, the Soviets did indeed launch these counterattacks. It definitely adds to the challenge. It really, uh, it's going to be really interesting. I think the greatest thing is going to be seeing how are we able to actually uh, formulate our lines once again. I'm actually somewhat torn between having these men sent south. I think the south is okay for the time being, but then again, it does depend. Uh, you are under Stavka. Who does the... Well, what? I suppose you are in the... Are you under the Orel Military District in this area? Okay, so you would be within the Orel Military District. So what I'm going to say then is these forces, the ones that are able to be moved, they are going to be shifted towards... I suppose the area of greatest danger is obviously going to be a longer... Um, Smolensk... Peskov. Obviously we must protect the vitals, we must protect Moscow, we must protect Leningrad. So we'll have to have forces shipped up that way to do that. So I do have elements here of the Kharkov Military Command. We'll have them make their way down to Kiev. Okay. So you belong to the Long Range Air Command as well, okay. Not too bad. 
Right, I do have uh, rifle divisions of the RL military district. I'm going to have them sent towards their actual commands over here, so we can actually have them organized. We will receive quite a, uh, a nice amount of reinforcements next turn. <laughs> well, uh, a few divisions, not too many. Granted, there's only 97 men in them, but uh, we'll receive them, and they'll build up in time. As you can see, we'll receive quite a few uh, divisions over here as well. These are going to be built up. It's going to take some time here. Yeah, that's what we're trying to do here, then. <laughs> While mitigating uh, stuff, because idiocy. Ooh. We'll have to see. I'm going to have to outdo them here on the idiocy, aren't I? Okay. I do have a decent tank division over here, to so that's quite nice to see. Uh, where is your command here? You were assigned directly by the 23rd Mechanized Corps. Okay, there's some distance there on that, isn't there? Okay. Right. Am I able to have them shipped up to the front? We are indeed, I believe. So I'm going to have them shipped up to this area. We'll say... Um, hmm... I'm going to be looking towards the south of Minsk, actually. Uh, so we'll say about this position here. Need to have you brought up and able to perform here. Okay, so we do have a couple of divisions over here. They're not yet active, but we will be able to use the divisions that are active. Okay, so we do have a number of airborne brigades over here. We do have some decent forces to the south. Um, okay. <laughs> Not so much. Right then, who's going to win here? Third Panzer versus the uh, 55th Rifle Division. Hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, I had to look at those. They are really awesome, actually. I do love the actual scale of them. Really impressive. Okay, so we still hold on to Minsk here, which is very important. Now, we might be able to buy ourselves some time if we're able to concentrate against a single unit. So we'll take a look at the 5th, sorry, yeah, uh, is this the 7th Panzer Division? Yep, yeah, 7th Panzer Division. Now, I do have a number of airfields here at the front, so what we are going to be doing here, then, is I'm going to concentrate the air power. In fact, I don't think I'm able to concentrate this air power. Sorry, that's hitting the airfields, wrong button. Right, there we go. So, I do have a great deal of bombers actually available here. I'm not entirely sure where the Axis airfields are at the moment. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, so we do have some distance here between our own airfields and the Axis airfields here. So the Luftwaffe is in the area, but obviously will take them some time to arrive. So what I'm going to try and do here then is try and hit this Panzer Division as hard as possible here. We'll see what sort of damage we can actually inflict upon the enemy. Okay. Not a great deal, but anything we inflict upon the Division will help us. Okay. What I'm going to be doing then is actually moving these airfields back over here to Mogilev. More so to the north, but uh, we need to stick the rail lines here. Well, this one's doomed. Okay, you need to be shifted up over here to the north. There we go. Fourteenth mechanized. Just has ceased to exist, hasn't it? Ceased to exist. Hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, they look incredible there, cold. Really can see the appeal there. I tell you what, time is going by very quickly, isn't it? I can't believe it. It's incredible, isn't it, to think, like, uh, we have to organize here this uh, order of battle. We have much to do. 
I will aim to get turn one done here for you guys live. That's going to be good. It'd be nice to see what the actual uh, state of play is in the next turn and see what we can actually achieve here. We will receive... Um, and let's see. So on the fourth turn, I do receive some tank divisions over here. We're going to have to build up these divisions. There is the odd division every now and then, which actually does arrive in strength. But yeah, for the most part, it is going to be a waiting game. These are... Yeah, these divisions need to gather their strength. We are able to actually build units as well. So that's something that we'll be taking a look at in the near future as well. So we can see that we do have uh, reserves here to arrive. Not a great deal of them, though. Okay, so what we're going to do here then is uh, combat, <laughs> that's going to be great to say. If we're going to save what we can, attack where we're able to do so, and retreat where we must. Okay. Now, the city of Minsk is going to be rather intriguing. Uh, we do have the Western Front headquarters over here. We are going to have that moved over uh, by Muglev. Cannot allow that fall. What sort of... Um, hmm. We are able to take up defensive positions here, so we do have some fortifications, so that's quite nice. I do have mostly airborne brigade in this area. I do have two rifle divisions here. Okay. They do have a decent ability to fight within the city. Reinforce them with the air brigade. these assets over to Minsk. We do actually destroy some armored fighter vehicles, so that's not too bad, actually. It's nice to see that the actual um, attacks here via the air did actually inflict some damage upon the enemy. Okay, so what we're going to have to do here, then? I think the best case scenario is we are going to have to try and move in one direction. So I'm going to try and make our way towards Minsk, if possible. I'm going to try and counterattack against this area here. Try and slow down the onslaught of Army Group Center, especially these infantry divisions. The Panzer Groups are dangerous, of course, but the thing is, uh, they only have so much fuel. I was hoping that we could actually grab an airfield there, but unfortunately not. <laughs> oh, good god. Okay. We'll advance here as well. We'll uh, say that this is obviously to simulate the fact that uh, not every unit was aware of the actual situation going on across the front. Of course, uh, radio communication was something very difficult. Communication lines between the actual uh, levels of command had been pretty well effectively cut. Not an easy time. Okay. 
but I do have some elements here of the third mechanized. Not in the best shape, are they? Hmm. See, the difficulty here is uh, the actual approach by the axis is obviously the large scale envelopment. That's going to be a difficult one. I indeed. Definitely, definitely survival mode. I can take the city, sorry, the town of Verana. So very close. Okay, so what we're trying to do here then is actually oppose the Panzer Divisions. They are making a uh, good deal of progress, but we will be able to rely on them running out of fuel shortly. It is going to be harder for them if I actually oppose them on the rail lines over here, so oppose the... Uh, well, really, not so much the rail lines as such, but obviously the areas of clear terrain. We want to try and force them uh, to move out into the swamps, out into the forest, out into really anywhere that's going to slow them down. Uh, cause them to burn more fuel. Reinforce this town over here. Move to the rear. There we go. No ability to counterattack as of yet. Okay. 21st Mechanized Call. And we can try to actually prepare for a counteroffensive over here then. These forces currently in reserve. As uh, so what I'm going to do then is let's take a look. We do have uh, Velki Luki over here. I could have them shifted. I'm going to have them shifted actually up north. Along the actual river line here. It will give us the best chance to actually prepare for some sort of counterattack. Right, move you on the rail line. You're going to be shifted up over here as well. Okay, so I do have this division here to hold on to Riga. I am going to have the north-western front actually shipped out over here to Peskov. We do have a lot of... Uh, I'm, yeah, just look at these army commands that uh, really do not have very much underneath them anymore. Season the high ground over here in uh, well, the battle for Latvia is only just beginning, really. I'll have these units actually uh, move to dig in, it's especially important that we dig in across this river line. I do have a decent tank division there. What's the construction value? Five. Okay, not quite as impressive, but still, it looks nice. Okay, I do have some forces up over this way. We're gonna have these divisions brought south. 
There we go. Try to make use of him. Ah, there we go. Have you shifted up over this way? Okay, so we could attempt to try and dig in over here by lava. Uh, but I'm going to say that this position is by far the best. It's... Well, then again, we do have the swamp over here. There's some heavy forest over here, but we do have a swamp. So the question... Well, then again, I'm probably better off to defend on this side. We do have the river to work for us. It is definitely going to be a uh, case of easier said than done. Okay, the 65th. I don't think you actually have it in command, do you? Not as of this moment here. Okay, we're going to have these elements brought out from there. At the moment, I'm trying to look at when I can uh, attack and when I can actually go with damage mitigation. Okay, these horses are not yet active in the north. We do have some divisions quite here, uh, quite far back in the rear, actually. So we're going to have them brought up to the front line over here by Piskov. Place them down there. These units not yet active. These units are not yet active. Obviously, the, uh, what is this, the 20th Army, some mechanized core. Okay. I do actually have uh, an availability of the 23rd. That's pretty good to see. Yeah, quite important. They should hopefully be able to hold that part of the front line. Definitely wishful thinking, but hey. Okay, so we do have a couple of headquarters out here by Saratov. Now, of course, the main part of our production... Well, Ch uh, well Chelyabinsk is obviously a uh, position of permanent supply. So we have Chelyabinsk, which is obviously producing KV-1s here at the moment. And we do have Baku. Let's take a look at the Transcorpsus front. Uh, okay, so I do have some actual elements available for shipping out. Yep, okay, so I do actually have a great deal of rail capacity, which is very, very nice. Indeed. I'm going to have these elements of the armoured forces shipped out down here, actually. Well, actually, I'll have them shipped to... Hmm... I'll form them up, and then we'll have them shipped out to, I'd say, uh, possibly, probably the south, maybe Kiev, maybe to Crimea, actually. Okay. Hmm. I need to protect uh, Kharkov above all, actually, so I'm going to be looking towards this central area. So we'll have them sent to Kirovgrad. At least I would be able to prepare to actually hold against the invader. I do have some divisions down here. We'll have them sent over here to Kiev. From the Kharkov military district, have them assigned to the southwestern front there. Now you're part of the North Caucasus military district, but we're going to have you sent out here as well to join the southwestern military district. Take you off the train and have you reassigned there to the southwestern front. Okay, so we do still have some other elements here available, which is very nice. Have uh, moved. Okay, so at least we will have some reinforcements out here. Now the question is going to be, are they required by Kiev, or am I better off sending them up towards uh, Smolensk? Uh, we'll have them sent outside here to Kharkov, and then we'll have to decide in the following turn, as we don't quite have the ability to move them as of yet. Okay, so that is looking like all the forces here that I do have available for movement in the first turn. It, <laughs> it's one of these things, isn't it? You can uh, imagine that a lot of these uh, attacks really are counterintuitive, and of course they are. What I'm trying to represent here is just the sheer level of... Uh, well, we're going to have to go into survival mode here to survive this. And it's it's going to be rather intriguing. 
it's it's like we've definitely hurt ourselves here by attacking. But of course, the Soviets did. And so we must do the same. And you guys rate our chances of survival here in the first few days. I'm going to say it's a 100% chance to survive. <laughs> oh god, this is going to be fun. But we will have lots of things to play with in the future. So, I'm okay. The Soviet Union will not fall. It shall not be one single kick to the front door. This structure is going to remain solid. And fall on top of the actual invader. So go ahead here. Uh, go ahead here. And take a look at the first turn in its finality. Oh dear. <laughs> it's so many forces here cut off. It's, it's, it's going to be painful. It's going to be very, very painful. Yeah, I'll survive. Yeah, saw it well. <laughs> I was hoping that we might have been able to have more of a vigorous counterattack, but the uh, the issue is that a lot of our armored units, a lot of our mechanized uh, cores, really just they were shattered. Absolutely shattered. And there goes the fair team. Of course, we are going to see this pocket here just rapidly melt. We'll see what sort of damage you can actually cause to the Axis invader. They are forced to surrender. Full JF is gone as well. So I do have more administration points to play with here, which is quite nice. That's going to be very good. Now, I do want to stress here. <laughs> it's going to sound rather like an excuse, but I have purposely uh, left myself in the dark about the Soviet Union. Uh, at least in how they play in the actual game here. The reason being, uh, it, it adds to the difficulty here. But I'm going to have to learn as we go on. God, so many units should have just been demolished here. <laughs> See, it's not so much about the tank division. The tank divisions here are all well and good. But it's primarily about the actual infantry divisions. Those are the ones that we need to survive. But uh, in this pocket, yeah, they have they have absolutely no chance of it. We're not going to see them escape this pocket. It'd be great if we could, but man, it is not going to happen. Yep, indeed. I don't think we're going to be as lucky to see any of our units actually retreat rather than surrender. We can dream. Oh, actually, no, there we go. The dream has come true. There we go, guys. We can wrap it up. War is won. In the distant future. Ah, there we go. Oh. <laughs> Just so many men walk into captivity here. But we are causing the Axis some losses. See, they lost 25 men. Okay, now the 140th rounds, which um, it's less than great. But due to the fact that we're... Oh, hello. We actually... Uh, wow, we're actually hell here. Oh, wow. The 195th, they're really doing a damn good job. I think they may be the only division there. 
I'm telling you what, there we go. The vigorous counterattack has worked. The Axis is terrifying. 44th Mountain Division, doing very well there. A few hero divisions already. See, due to the fact that we actually do have uh, control of these areas, our men will not just surrender. They'll probably rout, they might uh, be shattered, but we do have space. Now, space is just so important. 44th there is pounded into oblivion, but they still are alive. They can be reconstituted in the turn to come. Very nice there. The 15th tank division put up a good fight. And holds it out once again. A loss of 23 armored fighter vehicles, but still holding on here. Uh, the 202nd motorized being pushed back. We will probably see the Axis take Riga here this turn. In space, no one can hear you retreat. Yep, exactly. <laughs> oh, that one's a good one. Okay. I I'm impressed. I am impressed by that one. Ooh, okay. Yep, the Axis are already here. I was hoping they would have a little bit more time there to dig in, but the important thing is they have not yet crossed the river. We may have forces available to actually try and hold them. 108 thread there shattered, that's unfortunate. He definitely does want Leningrad. But we shall not give it to him. The beautiful thing here is uh, at least they will run out of fuel, theoretically. Ooh, things are definitely getting spicy there. It definitely does hurt to see so many units lost here. Now, this is where it's going to be rather intriguing when it comes to Minsk. I think Minsk is going to be difficult for them. They probably may manage it, but I'm going to be intrigued to see how they actually do pull it off. Oh, wow. Okay, yep. Um, I completely underestimated the actual access there. They've gone ahead and uh, advanced onto Muggler. I genuinely did not expect them to do that. So it looks as if they bypassed the city. I'd imagine they've cut off the city of Minsk, actually. That's actually really intriguing. I didn't expect them to do that. So that's, uh, hmm. Not a bad move. Not a bad move. At the end of the day, why why fight for the city? Yep, they've definitely cut off our forces uh, around Minsk. Uh, we do have supplies in Minsk, so it is going to be a case of trying to desperately survive in the city there. There goes the 36th tank division, but you can see there was not much really of a tank division. It's painful here to see these elements being destroyed. I didn't expect them to actually... Uh... Hmm. The good news is we might be able to cause them some actual problems here by Mogilev. I think they will be at the limit of their fuel, ideally. So we'll have to see about that one. The 220th motorized is routed, but not destroyed entirely. Okay. So he uses the 14th, 30th, and the 25th motorized divisions over there. <laughs> uh, don't say that. <laughs> That's a very good position, but a dub known. But they are using the 14th uh, Panzer and Motorized. I mean, this is going to be painful, but if we can try to slow them down around here, around this point with the Southwestern Army Command, it may give us time. Now, some of our forces here are very tenacious in the fact that they're actually able to hold out here against uh, just vastly superior odds. Now, that is impressive. The ability here is, with our men, if they're actually given supply and room, ideally decent commanders as well. They're having a hell of a time dislodging them. That's really good to see there. All of this actually just tied them down, which is superb. Now, we're still taking heavy losses, but the uh, good news is this is just tying them up. I'm still surprised about their um, 
<laughs> Deep penetration by Mogilev, actually. Did not expect that. Right. Okay, I'd love to see where that actual uh, delivery came from. Okay, there we go. Axis turn two. Hmm. Hello there, Drunk. How you doing there, my friend? Good to have you on board, as always. So what did you guys think about that turn there? Yeah, they definitely did throw me a curveball there, Mogilev. That one's actually rather surprising. I'm gonna say this probably cost me an air power. Uh, we do lose here. Uh, 234 there. Yep, 86 of those there. That is rather painful. So let's take a look then. Um, so we've lost 2,615 airframes so far since the war has begun here on the Eastern Front. Uh, we have lost another uh, 298,428... Uh, sorry, 429 men there. It was up to 678,222 men. The Axis losing a grand total of 30,000 men. Though uh, the vast majority of those could be theoretically returned. 147 AFVs so far, we've lost 3,979. Yeah, they pushed heavily around Mogilev. And of course around Piskov. Now, we do have more forces actually active, so let's go ahead and take a look at the logistics phase events here. So as you can see, these units are now isolated. Forecast is still clear. We can see that these units have arrived. Uh, 97 men in each of these. So obviously these guys are not yet ready for combat. They're going to have to build up. Okay. Uh, these units have been unfrozen. You can see that's quite a lot of units here unfrozen. Which is very good to see. Uh, the 105th NKVD Border Regiment was disbanded. Okay. So you can see here the 140th. And uh, Division is reorganized, will return in 12 weeks, we can see the 220th will return in 8 weeks, 10 weeks, 9, 12. So these divisions will return in time. It's going to take some time, but they will return, which is good news. Uh, new units arrive here, and the National Reserve will have to make use of those. <laughs> 19 men are not ready for combat, what kind of combat are you? <laughs> You're definitely right, man. So you can see that 40,000 vehicles uh, have been added to the pool for mobilization, which is good to see. So at least that's going to help out our logistical phase here quite nicely. Okay. So we do have 3176mm uh, AA guns converted to the 85mm, which is good to see. Yeah, that's going on across the board here. Ground element swaps, okay. Right, let's see. What I'd like to do here, then, is actually see if I can, uh, <laughs> I mean, this. Okay, so they did actually cross the Denipan over here. Or the Dnieper River, I should say. I can't remember if it's been out of Denipan or Dnieper. I'm going to go with Dnieper. So they did actually cross. At least they do have a territory here. They do have a zone of control here. But they don't have a unit across, which is good to see. I can see that they are starved of fuel now. So I do have the ability here to cut them off, I think. It looks like there might be more units here than we're actually expecting. We do see the town of Orshion over here as well. Okay, so we do have forces by Vidabusk. Uh, forces here by Smolensk. So we do have new divisions here, which is very good. Yeah, we can see that many more divisions are now ready. Uh, we did fare decently well down here. Obviously, the counterattack has to continue down here itself. Vrovno. Hello, we do see quite a few Panzer units over here, the 11th, 13th, 16th. That's an incredibly tough division there. And not to mention the fact that there's three of them. Okay, we'll continue the actual counter-attack here by Rovno. So basically how I'm going to be playing this is, of course, we did have on the Facebook poll a vote for a counter-offensive. So how I'm going to do this is that during each of these sessions, the actual winning vote will be the one that decides 
what we'll be doing throughout this actual uh, session, I'll call it. So, let's say, for example, that um, as has happened here in the first session, we have counterattacks. So we will attempt to counterattack throughout the actual session here. And then if the next session is actually voted for defense, then we'll be defending. We'll be looking towards actually going into defensive positions, trying to hold the axis back. But of course, if it's actually counter-offensive, we'll of course, we'll be throwing our men into glorious combat in the Great Patriotic War. And of course, we'll achieve victory here. Victory at great cost, but victory nonetheless. Now, fuel's an interesting one. So let's take a look over here, then. We are able to reclaim the city of Rodno. The city is always going to be heavily damaged. There's still some actual supply here. Uh, we might be able to set up something here, actually. I mean, it would obviously depend on the fact of me being able to drive off the 111th and the 25th motorized, uh, which is not exactly likely. It's, in fact, very unlikely. But our forces here are actually able to prep a better fight, which is nice. We do have more forces available, so we will be launching a counter-offensive here. I believe the actual uh, remainings will be active enough soon. Now, they have remained inactive during two and, uh, turn 2, which is very nice. So I do have that going for me. I do worry about what will happen once they are active, so it's going to be an interesting question. I think what we're going to have to do then is address the questions over here to the north. Now, Riga holds. Minsk holds on as well, which is intriguing. The AI here just uh, opt in just to ignore these cities. I do have the ability to actually link up these forces together. Now, we do see an airfield over here, but I know what my luck is like when it comes to these sorts of things. There will be a unit there. So first and foremost, we're going to be running our reconnaissance here. I did not expect them to be so... Uh... Yeah. This may be a solitary airfield. Okay. I can put some pressure on the north over here, but it is all about trying to drive back these panzers. The 1st Panzer Division and the 8th Panzer Division uh, looks to be an element of motorized over here. Right, what I need to go ahead and do here then, let's see. Do I have an option here to turn on or off upgrades? I'd rather have control over when a unit actually uh, upgrades. Okay. Okay, manual, there we go. Now, can I do that across a... Swarf of units, that'd make it significantly quicker. Uh, so we'll go to units here, then. So I'm going to clear all filters. So go with none. Right, air landing there, okay. Partisans, there we go, air base. I don't know if I'll be able to do it from here. Let's see. Okay, I'll do it like this one. That's fine by me. Place our manual. The reason I'm doing this is so we don't have squadrons upgrading without our permission. So it'll take a while, but we'll have this done, and then at least we'll have full control of our air forces. It should be worthwhile. It'll not take us that long, really. I'll just go uh, down the front, actually. The good news is I do have, actually, my uh, my airfields are actually um, close together. Make sure I've got this one here. Select the air groups, not the units. Oh, okay. So if I go over here, then. Would I access this one through here, then? First time doing something like this, actually. Oh, 
Oh, there we go, air grooms. Ah, oh, there we go. Thank you very much, Matt James. Really appreciate it. Okay. One is manual. Fantastic. <laughs> Saved me so much time there, hasn't it? Thank you very much, Matt. Really appreciate it. Yep, there we go. A great swarf of M. So that's awesome, then. And let's go ahead and take a look at our actual production pool. I mean, as far as it goes, what are we going to be looking towards actually wanting to be used in the air? Now, of course, I do have the MiG-3, but is the MiG-3 really what I want to be using? I suppose we'll have new units in time, so let's go ahead and take a look here. So that shows types, let's see, production filter is off. Uh, so obviously that shows us what we'll be uh, producing in the future, man. So we have the PE3. That's pretty cool. That's our night fighter there. So we do have Yak 9s. So they're introduced there. Ryan, you upgraded to the Yak 9D in 1943. When do we actually arrive? So October 1942. Okay. 44 there. We do have P40Bs, they will arrive in October. It looks as if October, January 1943 there. Yeah, it looks like October is going to be really the time that a lot of these units are really placed back into production. Yak 7s, December 1941. Okay, not too long until we have Yaks. May 42. Hurricanes in October, that's probably when Land Lease begins them, really. We do have P39 Aero Cobras over here. Really awesome aircraft. 37mm cannon, my god. Okay. These are really cool. B-25s as well. The Mighty Mitchell. Okay. I suppose that's um, a little bit beyond the scope here to worry about at the moment. What I'm going to be looking for then is really what's actually in the pools. Uh, the reason why I don't want to be upgrading uh, without my actual permission, really. But I, I don't want it on the automatic. The reason being, as you can see, for example, so we have the MiG-3 at the moment. So you can see that we have 218 in the pool. We built 72 there, then 24 units. So my capacity is 72 at the moment. But of course, I still have, well, 16 Yak-1, 66 in LAGG-3. Yeah, P-39 had performance issues at altitude. I, I, <laughs> I can imagine it's got a great big honking cannon in it. <laughs> Pretty cool, though. Yeah, so I'm going to be looking towards actually trying to use up those pools of units. Um, as you can see, we do have the I-153s, the I-16s, I-15s. There's a lot of those still actually within the pool. So what I want to do then is actually use up those units in that pool as much as possible. I'm looking to really try and overwhelm uh, individual access airfields as much as possible through sheer brutality, sheer weight of numbers, really. And then obviously as we go on, we'll be able to upgrade to superior aircraft when we want to and where we want to. I'm going to be looking towards actually concentrating that air power. Okay. I've actually no idea about that one there, Pino. I'd be very happy if it was. Okay. So let's see here. We have 72 points. Let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, what I'm going to quickly go ahead and do here then is actually go into the manual. I'm just going to look at how we build our new units. Now, I wasn't kidding when I said that I really don't know that much about the Soviet Union. And I know it sounds like a cop-out, but I'm genuinely going to do this as a learning process myself. And because I want to try and simulate the fact that obviously the Soviets weren't on the, uh, on the ball, were they, of course. 
Is there a turn limit? Um, see, I think it is a certain point. I'm also going to do a little bit of reading. Of course, if you are actual veterans here, one of the East, if you guys do know, do let me know. Okay. The manual is fantastic, but it's quite nice. So what do you guys think then so far? Like, how do you think we should actually try to protect our uh, vitals? And it's interesting to see how the Axis has been driving on here. I do have these divisions over here. It's going to be intriguing. I think I will have them brought up. As I do see a mighty uh, amount of airfields over here. It looks as if they are protected, but if they're unprotected, I might be able to actually do something here. Uh, no factories on the first two turns now, I think. Okay. That's good, man. So it'll be next turn that we can actually look at actually moving out some of these factories, which is quite good then. That'll be intriguing. Okay, so I'm just looking for the actual uh, unit build. It may be that we're unable to build them at the moment. I don't know whether I need to be over specific cities, but when I obviously do go to the build new, it looks as if that's not actually available as of yet. So that could be the reason. Okay. We'll go on. We'll figure that out as we go. I'm very much a kinesthetic learner in that sort of degree. <laughs> okay, so... Let's take a look now. We do have the airborne. There's a number of interesting positions over here. I suppose in some ways we are blessed by having actual still... Yeah, actually still having control of this rail line. It is still actually in service, which is superb as well. That rail line is obviously um, still active, but obviously it's been cut off, so it's therefore useless. Right. I think we'll actually start up here in the north then. Let's see. I'm going to look towards actually trying to link up with Riga once again, actually. Okay, so we actually do have a uh, connection back to Riga. That's really quite good. Now, I do have the NKVD Border Regiment, the 125th Rifle Division, and the 12th NKVD Border Regiment. Now, do I have the ability here to move them out? So naval move is not available. Amphibious is not available either. Okay. So we have shipping available 10,500. Transport cost is 130, 500, 108. I think it's not so much an issue of capacity. I think it's just the fact that we do not have a port here available. Uh, which is unfortunate. I do have a 90th over there. Let's see. Can I have... Yeah, so I could have the 67th Rifle Division transferred into the city of Riga. Uh, however, they aren't really in the best position right now, are they? It may be worthwhile. <laughs> Indeed, they can swim, can't they? Hmm. Let's see. I'm actually going to have them move down here. Definitely a suicidal move, really. But if we can actually hold on to the city of Riga longer, that's going to be quite nice. Uh, the thing is about ports is they are considered... They're basically considered being uh, part of the railhead as such, but obviously they don't. Like, you can't just connect it up to Riga and have your trains function. You need to have it connected up to the proper railheads. But at least in the actual ports, you do receive supply, as you would on a railhead. So they are very important sites for the access to take. Well, they are being very aggressive here. I'm actually quite proud to see that they are advancing quite deep into the Soviet territory here. So that is going to be a very interesting challenge. Okay. Again, we're looking here for areas where I can actually launch a attack. So what I'm going to be doing then is actually moving my units here. We do have NKBD to actually build up some of these numbers. Uh, this unit is going to be moved out from the island. I'm going to have it sent towards um, Narva if I can. We'll be looking at taking the uh, town of Valga back. Okay, I do need to hold this position here, otherwise these are... Uh... <laughs> yeah, it would be really bad if they did take this position. It's very swampy, but it could be taken if they do move a unit. I don't think they'll be doing so very much. Now, the first Panzer Division, it does depend. I may be able to cut off some of these units. It is... It's going to be a matter of zone of control. Now, I'm going to run the reconnaissance once again. 
make sure I've not missed anything. It might be due to the fact that I just don't have the supplies, or it may be the projection of zone of control from the panzers. But what I'm going to be doing here then is I'm going to be throwing my air power against the first panzer division. Now if you take a look here, we do have 416 fighters. Uh, we do have some reconnaissance. I mean, I don't know why I need reconnaissance there. Not uh, exactly uh, going to do me any good. So I'm going to throw everything here against the actual first panzer division. Try and cause some damage here. I'm actually not able to do so. Okay. We'll just go ahead and launch all of them. Okay. Oh, that's why I was running reconnaissance. My bad. <laughs> well, that's very well reconnoitred. <laughs> that's my bad. Sorry about that, guys. I hit the wrong button there, didn't I? Okay, so we can see that a number of our bombers are being shot down here. I did... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's uh, probably the... Um... And that's a hell of a reconnaissance. It's reconnaissance uh, by filling the skies with planes. Oh dear. <laughs> oh, that was embarrassing. But hey, we have really good information on that area now. Not causing much there, but at least it could make a difference in the long run. Okay, so let's take a look at what assets we have available to us. I am going to have this actual infantry division here, because I cannot allow them to cross at this point here. If I allow them to cross, these airfields are doomed. They're probably doomed as is, but I don't want them to be especially doomed. So we'll have them placed in the rail line over here. Some distance from the front at least, where at least they are going to be in a position to survive. That'd be ideal. <laughs> they are circling. <laughs> uh, they're taunting us for their numbers. I suppose it'd be like a reminder of like, yes, we are still alive. Okay, the good news is I did have these assets move up, which is especially important. I don't think I have the ability to actually cut off these divisions here, which is a shame. Oh, we do actually. That's very good. We'll see what sort of damage we can actually cause this division there. Okay. <laughs> it's not going to do a good deal of damage to them, but at least it is a... Uh, it, it's nice that we were able to cut off one of them. The good news is, of course, it's going to suffer even more so in the next phase of us, as obviously it's it's going gonna, it's gonna to lack any sort of uh, supply coming in there. So I deal with about to starve them a little bit more. Okay, we've... Uh, okay, we actually destroyed a squad there. Okay. This is where artillery is exceptionally useful here. The big guns of the Soviet army are really what we want to be seeing used in action. So what we're doing here then is we'll uh, make our way over to Stavka, to the high command there in Moscow. And we'll be taking a look at what we actually have available in terms of toys. Now, I'm actually going to be rather intrigued to see what sort of guns we have. I think we'll probably have something in the region of about 200mm uh, plus guns at, as potentially our largest, but I'm going to be interested to see if we have anything else actually. I don't know, maybe we can actually have the uh, battleships brought onto land, perhaps? You know, uh, aka like a Cybrum, Cybrum supremacy sort of thing, like uh, it, it, ain't a, it ain't a cruiser unless it can walk on land, basically. If you guys have played Supreme Commander, you'll know what I'm talking about. The Cybrum were awesome. They were probably the best faction in terms of just like sheer aesthetics. 
Eon, Eon sucked. Was it Eon? Aeon? It was one of them, but they sucked anyhow. Okay, so they do hold that, but it has... It's gonna hurt them. It's gonna hurt them. I'm really feeling the lack of units here. This is, uh, it's, it's hurting. But I do have some rifle divisions here by, uh, Vilki Luki. So that's very good. Uh, Vililiki. Vililiki Luki. I've, uh, butchered that pronunciation. Right, so Stavka. Let's see. Wow. It's an incredibly, uh, long name, man. <laughs> Now, the question's going to be like, uh, we'll see who we could have to replace some then. So, we do have uh, Zukov over there, but I don't know if it's actually worth having Zukov there. I'd rather have somebody who's actually uh, a more able administrator, but it's actually not a bad administrator, is he? Hmm. We'll have. I mean, we do have. Um... Yeah. We'll go with one of our marshals over here, then. Administrative ease, five. Five and six. <laughs> Shouldn't have killed 80% of your administrators for three years ago, <laughs> indeed. As we'll have Marshal Timoshenko, Timoshenko uh, Semyon. Placed in overall command here. We'll go for a top-down reorganization, then. So, I have long-range air command here. Hmm. I'm going to save these administration points, actually, for the front line. We'll be looking, actually, um, replacing our commanders here. Though the question is going to be, like, where to actually concentrate these efforts. But we'll make our way down the line and we'll go from there. We are able to try and make something of a stand here. Ultimately, we will be, um, enveloped. As long as you can see, the gaps are already appearing. The Romanians will be active from the next turn, potentially. So we have that to bear in mind. Uh, the Axis over here in Army Group Center are quickly going to clear up these pockets. I mean, I'm, I'm still very impressed by the fact that they did just bypass Minsk there. If you guys have seen that Pikachu meme where it's basically the uh, shocked Pikachu, then it is basically me. Right, we do have some divisions in Bugle so that's good news. Let's go ahead and take a look at the actual uh, li uh, events over here, then. Hmm. Yep, I'm glad that we do have them available. Let's go ahead and take a look at fortifications, actually. Now. Fortifications are definitely going to be the order of the day here, really. And the, um... Fortified area around Kiev, obviously, we do want to hold on to that. I do have a few divisions that are ready. We are going to have to have them railed to the front lines ASAP. So, 43,000... Tons there of uh, rail carrying capacity, we'll call it. Okay, the 28th Division there has survived. We can have them attempt to make their way towards Riga, actually, which is not a bad idea. And in all honesty, I could actually step out of the city of Riga here. Step back into the city. So we have reconnected the supply line all the way down here, which is actually surprisingly good. They may... may last that little bit longer now. Uh, we do have... Well, what do we have remaining inside here, then? Some T-40s. Okay. Nice little tank. Uh, so we have some flamethrower tanks here available. BT-7s. We do have quite a lot of BT-7s, actually. It wouldn't be a bad idea to actually have them survive. But the important aspect is the fact that, yeah, this is men and material. We need this to survive. As you can see, we still have some rifle squads. They do come in hand. The sapper squads are always very good to have. We need them to survive the onslaught here. These units are ready. It looks as if they're concentrated more so to the southern end of this gulf, which actually does make sense. And the fact that they've actually crossed over here the river, well, they've taken part of the uh, river Sorot, or is this, uh, 
Velikia. The, the uh, river Velikia. Yeah, the fact that they've crossed here is actually impressive. Hmm. Okay. So we'll get down to the ground here. We'll see what we have available. So I have the 12th mechanized core. We'll go round by that then. We'll go through the cores as much as possible. But then again, it's probably a better idea to go from the armies. We'll go from the armies down then, really. We'll start at the front headquarters, then we'll go down to the army, then from the army to the cores. Try and replace some, d well, <laughs> poor commanders. Now, uh, Fyodor, Fyodor, he's not too terrible, like, he's not the best commander I've ever seen, but he's not too bad. The administration at 6 is not bad. The initiative really isn't too great. Uh, initiative would be quite nice to have. That's a little bit higher. So we might take a look at a replacement. But then again, his political cost rate is actually quite great. So we do have to bear in mind that it's 14 administration points. But what I'm going to go ahead and do here then is go back to Stavka over in Moscow. Okay, yep. <laughs> look at all that support there. So, Stavka has 2,309, well, guns attached to it. That is a lot of support there, 88 support elements. That's a stupendous amount. Oh, we actually do have some siege mortars, 218mm siege mortars, that's awesome. Yeah, they'll be very handy to use in the future, actually. I like those guys. Let's go ahead and actually take a look at what we actually have. What is the heaviest piece of artillery that we do actually currently use? Uh, so we'll go into the actual commands here. Go into high command. Go into our guns. Now, super heavy guns. So we have the 203mm howitzer. We have the 280mm siege mortar. We have 79 of them ready, actually. 640 of these 203 guns. That's quite nice. Really quite nice there. I mean, it's interesting when you actually see how this is broken down. When you see these, you think, okay, well, we have 36,000 uh, artillery pieces. Like, oh, yeah, these uh, these 70 millimeter guns, these 100 millimeter guns, so on and so forth. But in reality, the vast majority of that is going to be made up. Well, I mean, you take a look at this. We have 5,426 mortars there. Uh, 6,080 guns. Of course, we do have flak artillery, well, quote unquote artillery. So obviously, this is what you'd be thinking of. The 122mm and the 152mm howitzers. And the 152mm howitzers are pretty nice. Let's take a look at this house of regiments over here. Yeah. That's a nice big gun. That's a very nice big gun. Let's see, we have 20 of these guns here. Not a lot, is it? 107mm uh, field gun. 76mm field guns. There we go. Drive these 120mm mortars are quite nice. Okay. So we have 414 heavy tanks here, then. So 34 T-35s remain to us here. A lot of those were actually taken out in the first uh, turns in Velaments, really. Uh, 94 of these KV-1s, we have 203 of the uh, KV-1 1941 variant, and only 83 KV-2s remain in here. Obviously still on active service, these guys are still damaged. I do personally like the T-35. I think I'd like to maybe do a Flames of War Soviet Army or a Flames of War uh, Bolt Action Army, actually. So that would be rather cool. I'd love to have a T-35, actually. Those things are just cool. They just look awesome. It's just a battleship on the land. It's it's what's not to love about that. So obviously this is now under the command of Tumishanko. Okay. You can definitely see here. About what, fifteen hundred um, or so quote unquote usable tanks? Not a great deal, is it? Okay, so what we're going to be doing here then is we'll take a look at where the support needs to go then. 
I think it needs to be sent towards the uh, Smolent front, really. Though, see, this is it. The situation isn't so bad as of yet. I do have a couple divisions here to use. Uh, this is a difficult situation, but then again, the infantry is more or less about here. So it's going to take a, the infantry another week, maybe, to reach the front. Maybe another two weeks, depending. So what I need to do is actually look after this position here. This is probably where we need to really focus to a degree. So let's go ahead and do that then. So I do have a couple of infantry divisions here. Now the question is going to be, uh, do I try to cut this unit off? We would possibly... No, I don't quite have the ability to do that, unfortunately. So let's see, do I have the ability to hit it? Yeah, we do, okay. So I'm going to throw everything I can here, including the kitchen sink, at this motorized division. It doesn't look as if we actually inflict really anything in the way of damage there. That's a shame. We take a look at that. Show the details here. Yeah, okay. That was completely... <laughs> That's a shame. That is a shame. Okay. Could have gone better. Could have gone worse, but could have gone significantly better. Hmm. Okay, we'll start down here then. I'm going to shift the infantry up over this way. Oh, wow. So we actually are able to catch out the uh, Axis airfields over here. That's superb. That'll drive them off. That's going to buy us some time here. Right, take a position here. Okay, so we're not able to advance that deep as of yet, but it is going to put some pressure on these panzer units on the front line. Okay, let's see, the 51st rifle call. Now, this is actually a decent sized uh, force, isn't it? I mean, granted it's only three divisions, but my god, three divisions makes all the difference at this point in time now. We really do not have a huge amount of men, so having any sort of men available for action actually does make a considerable difference. And what do you guys think then? Do you think three divisions can actually do something great? Because I certainly do. I think we can do a lot here. Okay, let's go ahead and see. Now the question is going to be, do we actually look towards moving these men over here to Piskov? And I think that is going to be the right move. I could advance against this mecha, well, this motorized division, but in reality we do have the river line here. So I can actually set up a solid defense if I get the rifles in here ASAP. So what I'm going to do then is send them up and around. Take them off the train. Reinforce this position. We've had a vigorous counterattack over here, which has actually borne some fruit. Well, let's take a look at the actual third tank division, man. So the third tank division, we do have some. Let's take a look at these T28s. <laughs> look at that, that's awesome. And I don't know, I just really like these sort of things. They're just cool. I love the multi turret things. They're just so yeah. <laughs> like, uh, come on, guys. Like, imagine like a multi turreted by like, Abrams tank. That'd be kind of cool. I mean, the turret of the Abrams is actually ridiculous. But then imagine like two or three Abrams stuck together. That'd be cool. Okay. So let's see here. We might. It might be worthwhile just actually going ahead. I'm going to go ahead and go for the hasty attack. What I'm trying to do here then is actually cause damage to the first Panzer Division. If I can try and hit any of these uh, damage, well, if I can hit any of these armored fire vehicles and damage them, that'd be good news. I'm trying to exhaust the natural supply as well. So let's see what we can do here. Ideally, Howitzers would have a field day with this. What I'm hoping is that we'll actually be driven, uh, I mean, when we are inevitably driven off again by the Axis forces here in the local area of uh, Latvia. Well, we're just, just outside the borders of Latvia there. Ideally, we're driven across the river to our own lines, which is probably what will happen here. So we're looking at, what, Panzer II's over there? Okay. They're actually doing a, <laughs> they're doing a hell of a good job, my god, okay. 
Yeah, they do have Pioneer Battalions in support. They do have a self-propelled infantry gun company there. So they're not doing too bad. They actually do have a decent uh, toy box to play with there, don't they? Yeah, that's going to hurt. And it continues to hurt. Okay. We've damaged one tank so far. <laughs> good God. Not quite what I was envisioning there. I expected losses, but I didn't expect that many. But then again, a vigorous counterattack must be carried out here for the glory of the motherland. I think what we're going to do here then is I'm going to have the uh, Stavka make its first tour of, well, tour of duty around here to the north, actually. Ah, how you doing there, Kubernetes? Yeah, the map is really nice. There's quite a few uh, different map mods out there. I think this one is sunny day in Russia. There's a rainy day in Russia, there, which is a bit more of a uh, darker version, a bit more bluish, uh, which is actually really cool. Uh, okay, so I'm somewhat regretting the fact that <laughs> I just can't believe how many amplified vehicles we are losing here. My god, it's keeping on going. My lord. But still, this will help to grind the first Panzer Division down. The earlier we do this, the better. I've got to be able to hold this position. So if I could cause some issues, that's all well and good. Okay, we've lost over 100 vehicles now so far. Eventually, they'll run out of ammunition. Okay, I'm just going <laughs> to go ahead and speed this up. 200, wow. We destroyed two of them. Whew. And just like that, we basically wiped out that division. My god. That was, uh, that was quite rough. Uh, so I, <laughs> I think the wise thing to do here uh, would actually be to just, just retreat properly. Leaves them out of the cold, but uh, yeah. Well, I suppose actually I've got to keep them in position, otherwise they are going to be doomed. Nah, that nah, was incredible there. The first Panzer Division put up such a stupendous amount of resistance. Okay. Let's go ahead and bring Stav gun around here. But first and foremost, I'll make sure that I can't draw upon supply. Oh, sorry, yeah. Uh, okay, we can draw on it. That's good news. Okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. So we have quite a few heavy A battalions in here. That's good to see. I don't think there's a dual purpose. I don't know if they can be used like the 88 millimeters. I suppose it might be down to just training, really. Okay, let's see. 20 second rifle call. Okay. So they have a 24th army over here then. I think what we need to do then is go for the organization as such. There's so much here to organize, which is why I love about this. We have the 53rd rifle call. We'll have the 53rd transferred to this area here. Though in fairness, I th yeah, I think this is all I can actually afford to transfer to the um, Piskov front. I've got a lot to cover here around Smolensk, and obviously the threat to Smolensk is actually quite great. The good news is at least I do still have forces over here that are going to tie up access attention from Army Group Center. But of course, Army Group Center is the big bad wolf here in this scenario. I've got to hold this rip line. The good news is I do have a few divisions here that are ready, especially from the Moscow Military District, so we're able to make use of them. I'll have forces here from the Odell Military District as well, uh, the northern districts, they should have enough power now to hold on to a... Possibly to hold on. And I do have these forces over here. The uh, issue, I suppose the thing is, it's like, uh, Velki Luki, it's... This, yeah, I'm going to have to move forces over here to Piskov, but I would like to move some forces here just to hold this area, perhaps. But I'd say it's probably not the best time yet. I will have reinforcements to push into this area soon. The good news is, of course, their fuel is going to be very low. I've got to hold this area here. Have them shifted up. 
and off the rails. Okay, let's see what we can do here. I don't know that the Soviet AA had the proper gun sights or trying to use their guns for ATUs. Potentially so. I can imagine it's one of these things, isn't it? Uh, crew training. I mean, this is it. It's like with the a uh, 88mm gun. It really wasn't designed from the outset to be used against tanks, as far as I believe. I think it had its origins within the First World War as such, actually. But then again, obviously, a lot of these guns would have had their origins within that sort of time period. And obviously then flew on with their development. So that's it's probably, uh, probably a mute point there. Okay. Right. So we've had these headquarters here. I mean, this is really quite essential that I'm able to actually hold onto this area. Hmm. I'm going to leave a division. Well, then again, actually. I believe it was during the Spanish Civil War that the 88mm was first used as an ATPs. See, this is it. I do have a book on the Spanish Civil War, but I definitely do need to purchase a few more there. Because it's such an incredible period, isn't it? It's like you have assets from the... I mean, you have, like, the Italian... I believe the Italian sent, um... Equipment, I mean... It's interesting to see that the French really did not send too terribly much. And you had volunteers all over. I believe you had uh, volunteers from America, you had volunteers from South America, I do believe. Uh, but obviously you see, like, um, the Russians, the Soviets sending in equipment, tanks, aircraft, weapons. Uh, I believe Mexico actually sent quite a hefty um, amount of arms to the Republicans, I do believe. I can't remember exactly how much it was, but it was a decent contribution. But again, it's all well and good sending these arms and uh, equipment. But uh, obviously having men on the ground to bolster their numbers would probably would have been quite nice. But it's really intriguing with the Spanish Civil War. I mean, obviously it's like you had, like, uh, the Nationalists. But obviously when the Nationalists did begin the uh, Civil War, they actually did control quite a lot of the actual grain production. A lot of the actual essentials there for fighting a long war. So it's intriguing, really. Oh, and I'm no expert. Never going to claim to be. I just simply don't have enough reading behind me as of yet. I don't think there's ever a point in the uh, in time where you really do think, yeah, I've read enough. It's always more to learn. Always more to learn. Okay, so we have the 53rd Rifle Corps there, which is actually in a decent position now. I think this position here could um, hold well enough. Hmm. Yeah, these forces aren't ready. That's never a good sign. Okay, have the 182nd Bamboo South to reinforce that position. See, what I'm looking at doing here is preventing this Panzer Division from finding purchase over here. There's a little bit. I mean, obviously, we do have the first Panzer Division here cut off for the time being. So they can't move too freely. What I'll do then is move the 11th NKVD. So you're assigned to the 22nd Army. 22nd Army is over here, okay. What do I have here in the north? So I have the 27th Army. Right, so the 27th Army, the 11th Army, the 8th Army. Let's go ahead and take a look at the actual commander's report then. So we'll go ahead and take a look into the actual uh, HQ. Uh, so let's take a look at armies. Okay. 9th Army there under the southern front is the one that's overburdened at the moment. The good news is I do have a lot of actual commands here to actually spread units out across, which is nice. So take a look at this from front. It's definitely the southwestern front here. 
the southern front could actually take additional units so we're going to have some of those units transferred over to the uh, southern front here actually okay so what comes under the umbrella of the southwestern front so going to our, our order of battle here we go into the southwestern front So we have uh, the 5th, 6th, 12th, and 26th armies. We'll have you assigned there to the southern front. Now that does use a large amount of uh, administration points there. What I'm trying to do here then is actually try and uh, save the army. That's not making a terrible large difference. So there's not too much else I can do there. Okay. I'm not going to give them any additional artillery at this moment in time. Though saying that, what do we actually have here? Sapper battalions, we do have some Motri sappers. Uh, I'm going to allow that to stand as it is for the time being. I'm going to have this support really placed when we need it. Okay, moving on to this area then. Now, <laughs> yeah. Need to hold this area. We find here the 19th Panzer Division. Okay, we'll have you move further to the rear. Right, we do see interdiction there. Uh, 25 Hankel 111s. Have here then light woods, light woods over here. Right, we'll try and dig in this area here. Of course, the 19th Panzer Division should be able to knock these units back, but I've really got to try and hold them here. It's a shame that I've lost that rail line, but it's inconsequential at this moment in time. I still do have these rail lines here, anyhow. Am I able to construct new units yet? Oh, I see. Oh, there we go. There's the button I was looking for. Build new units over here. So at the moment, all I can produce is AT artillery brigades. Okay, so really, uh, <laughs> no use as of yet. So it looks as though we only see that button there. Ah, there we go. Yeah, it's cheaper later. That definitely makes sense. Okay, so that's how it works then when it comes to building new units. It has to be done by a city. But yeah, it looks like uh, administration points will... They definitely become cheaper then. I'm going to be looking towards actually having artillery sent towards this area over here, actually. That's uh, going to be where it's needed. Now, the issue is now... Let's see. I do have a decent amount of defensive value there. That's going to be important. I've got to try and hold them into this area. movies headquarters from the front lines here now as far as it goes 
Right, I'm gonna pull back across the river here. In fact, you could probably be placed in this position here. I'm gonna be looking towards the zone of control, actually. They were saying that. No, we'll pull back across the river. Spread them out here. Okay, looking better now. So we do have a couple of divisions here. It's not going to last long, but I just need to get the actual lines in place. And we'll still be looking at launching offences where able to do so, but the time is running out for that. And of course, it will definitely be up to the uh, vote of next session, really, as to whether we hold on to the offensive or as to whether we continue. Uh, well, as it, we'll look towards actual defensive. Yeah, not much there in the way of actual. But, uh, the best I can do here is try and slow them down. We do wow, there's a lot of fuel there that we find. That's a surprisingly large amount of movement there. Of course, I don't want to hurt the AI too much. I'm not going to be diving into Germany, man. Oh, we do have level 2 fortifications there, so that's probably the best we're going to get. Looks like 32 KV1s there as well. That's nice. Uh, 32 KV1, 17 kv Two is very nice. Quite a lot of T-34s as well. Yeah, 118 of them ready here. Yeah, that's a shame. Would have been amazing had we had those available. Okay. So it's it's gonna be rather intriguing, and the thing is, of course, we're trying to like uh, figure out how best to attack while really not having much capable of the attack. Really, 
I think additional support. I think I'll place additional supports in this area here. But I'm going to say the uh, greatest amount of support needs to be in this area. These Panzer Divisions are low on fuel, but they're still going to be attacking. The thing is, I've got to try and hold here and try and dig in some sort of defensive positions. As otherwise, they're going to use this and the army... Well, basically, the, um, the infantry will show up. And it's not going to be long before they show up, and they are going to be here to kick our asses. So we've got to try and, if possible, drive off the panzers. Try and starve the panzers as much as possible, really. Uh, hmm. Now let's see what we have as uh, reinforcements. So I do still have some additional forces. The thing is, let's take a look. Can I split these units up? I can't split these units up, okay. Do I really need to defend this area? What I'll do then is I'll shift this unit... Yeah, shift you. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do that then. Place you there. See, I was not even aware about Panzer Division there. Did not know about the 12th Panzer Division. Now, I could look at actually bringing some additional reinforcements over this way. Hello there, Dutchie. Good to have you, as always, my friend. So we could look at actually bringing in some reinforcements to this area here. I don't really need to hold this area too much. There's still some units over here, so uh, we do have an air bomb again. I'll have him placed inside the actual city. It's definitely nowhere near enough. Yeah, it's going to be a nice weekend, actually. Should be nice and fun. The weather's going to be absolutely beautiful, so um, hopefully we'll try and go to a pub or something of that nature. I have got a new camera to test out, so I'm looking forward to using that. But indeed, let's see. I do hope you have a good weekend as well. Thank you very much for actually asking that. Hmm... Right, so let's see what we actually have here then. So it's three rifle divisions. I am seeing one, two, three, another three there. Motorized, armored, armored, okay. So I do actually have some... usable assets. The thing is, they don't really have that much left in the tank there. That sounds pretty awesome man, dude. I hope you have a great weekend. I hope everything goes well. I do have plenty of infantry over here. It looks as if the Axis are definitely obviously moving up this way. So the question is going to be, do I take the forces? I think I'm going to take the forces of the Orel military district and have them um, uh, moved up here to the north, actually. No, I can totally understand that, Dutchie. We do have the ability to fight here in the south, which is very nice. I can't take it too much for granted, but we will continue the attack here in the south, regardless of what uh, may come, actually. Hmm. We have managed to dislodge some of that airfield, which is nice. Has that caused actually any damage? Yeah, we did manage to knock out a couple of our planes here, which is nice. It's not a huge amount of aircraft, but at least it will make a difference. So, of course, we are coming down to the last minute of this actual session. Now, of course, this is my first time playing the Soviet Union in Gallagher's with one of the East. So, we are going to be going through this as a learning process together. And, of course, it is up to you guys, the audience, to actually decide how we play. You need to go ahead and check out the Matrix polls on their Facebook platform and vote for whether you want to see a offensive or defensive session. It's going to be rather intriguing. The reason that I've actually pushed for this, I've actually asked Matrix to do this, is because I want to have you, the audience, actually represent the, uh, the, inter well, the influence of Stalin. <laughs> I don't know about well, but I'm glad that I can actually keep you guys entertained. It's always great to be here. Always great to see you all. So do go ahead and actually vote in the polls each week. It's going to be interesting. At the end of the day, even if you guys are like, hmm, okay, he's not looking too uh, too good on the ground here, let's make him go for a uh, offensive, then that, that works fantastic. I want this to be a challenge. I want this to be one of these series where we have to really 
really fight for every inch of ground. So, in all honesty, I want you guys to vote for the worst option. Because that is going to be really what makes this campaign entertaining. And perhaps we'll see the uh, Axis pushing on Moscow. Perhaps we might even lose Moscow or Leningrad. So it's going to be entertaining, isn't it? So I'd like to say a big thank you to all of you guys for watching. I have to apologise as per usual. I'm always really like... I, I get really tongue-tied at the start. But once I relax, get to enjoy talking to you guys. That's when, uh, when it comes out. I do hope you guys have enjoyed this. Really always a pleasure. If you have enjoyed this, please do consider checking out my channel on YouTube. I'll post a link to that now. And of course, thank you to our host here, Matrix and Slivering Games, for making this all possible. Really awesome people there. Definitely a great catalogue. And very much looking forward to hearing the news of what is to be released in the future. Hopefully something nice. So, of course, thank you so very much, my ladies and gentlemen. And until next time, if you'd like to see more of my work, please do consider supporting myself on Patreon. It really makes a big difference. I posted a link here. Thank you once again, and uh, this video will be live on my own channel as well. So I'm going to say a big thank you, and good night, ladies and gentlemen. Have a beautiful evening. And of course, if you are in Europe at the moment, yeah, really take care with the heat. It is exceptionally warm outside. So thank you, and goodbye, guys. Been a pleasure, as always. Goodbye for now.